lang babae, kailangan lumaban, tuloy lang ang buhay kahit anong problema, magkakaroon ka ng magandang trabaho, basta huwag ka lang mag-quit. Importante po para mapaunlad po yung mga sarili natin, lalo na sa mga kababaihan na huwag matakot, ilabas po yung uh, talent na meron sila. I think that learning is a lifelong thing that every woman should really consider. The Women in STEM program is a program that seeks to attract more women into careers in technology and to help women in this technology industry to stay and advance in this workplace. We do this through, number one, through scholarships that we provide to women in courses in technology such as animation, game development, software programming, impact sourcing, and web development. For women who are working in the technology industry, we are providing soft skills training to help women stay in the workforce and at the same time advance um, in this industry. So, nung nag-join ako, natutong mag-computer. Sa training kasi nila, meron dyan e-commerce, website design, logo design. Tinuruan kami kung paano magkaroon ng online job. Tapos yun, nakakuha ko ng client, gumawa ko ng website. Wala namang dapat ikatakot, ba? So, if you're not going to try, hindi mo malalaman kung mag-work. Lalo na kung talagang ang gusto mo, yung heart mo nandun sa ginagawa mo. Kapag nag-chain ka and kapag pinush mo yung sarili mo to do more than sa inaakala mo, marami ka palang kayang gawin and marami kang taong pwedeng matulungan. First time ko po dito kasi ano, parang wala talagang alam, wala akong background sa 3D. Yun lang alam ko mag-drawing. Tapos ng mga araw na lumilipas, parang siyempre, pag ba ka mahirap. Pero nakakaya ko po. <laughs> Ayun, mas nag-widen yung perspective ko dun sa animation kasi mas marami palang nagagawa nga yung sa 3D. At ngayon, pag nanonood ako ng mga Disney cartoons, yes, natutuwa ako sa kanyang panoorin kasi alam ko na siya ngayon kung paano nila ginagawa. I was never a gamer like my classmates. Pero, I love playing board games. Naisip ko, it would be nice if you understand how board games are done and uh, how I could come up with simple games for children to learn how to read. Women are more nurturing. They are the heart of the organization. They are more inclined to their emotions, which helps also in knowing which decisions to take. We look at this as a great uh, is an opportunity for women now to understand the opportunities that we have in the, the technology sector. There's still a lot of process of work that has to be done, but uh, I believe that uh, DICT and ILO has uh, actually seen the great potential of services of this program. Tesla is encouraging other women to grab this opportunity by exposing them to the field and motivating them that this is now the demand in the industry. I am very grateful to ILO for choosing Tesla as one of their partners in this program. Excellence and determination to exceed, to excel in a certain area does not depend sa gender naman ng tao. So women can do anything beyond what we can imagine naman talaga. The child embodies our ultimate vision that every Filipino learner will realize their full potential and ultimately reach their biggest dreams, no matter how high, no matter how hard, through quality education. And as our learners aim to soar, we must continue to elevate our goals. Rising, the kite is our emblem of aspiration to deliver the brand of quality in Philippine basic education. The quadrants of the soaring kite symbolize the key reform areas in forwarding this cause. As we embark on this aggressive reform to yield upskilled teachers, well-developed curriculum, 
improved learning environment, and responsive multi-stakeholder cooperation. Using the colors of our flag, the logo symbolizes our unity and serves as a reminder that it takes a nation to educate a child. Together, we as a nation will have to move forward and gain more momentum so that our vision of quality basic education for all shall take flight. Sama-sama sa pagsulong ng edukalidad. Kabisado niya kung paano ilarawan ng dagat. Kulay asul, lalim, malawak. Kinasasabikan niya ang pag-ahon ng tubig alat sa dalang kasigyan. Kinamamanghaan ang paglubog ng araw sa hanggang. Paghinga ang dulot sa kanya ng kalmadong karagatan. Para siyang hinihele sa musikang gawa ng mga alam. Pinatalo ang ingay ng mga palahaw at sigaw sa maghapon. Hinihilom ang mapapait na alaala ng kahapon. Yung takot, hikahos, pagkalunod ng pag-asang makapagtapos. Hanggang sa humupa ang mga pangamba. Sumilip muli ang liwanag sa lumubog na isla. Kaya't siya'y lumamoy, umibabaw, sumakay sa pinatibay na bangka. Bitbit ang mas matibay pa ang pag-asa. Yung hindi kayang palubugin ng mga panghusga, isinasagwa ng karanasan at mga aral na nabasa, naglalayag para sa kapakanan ng iba. Dumadaong sa pakpang ng katuwiran at dama. Siya, na pinatibay ng mga hampas ng alam. Na kahit lumipas man ang mahabang panahon, kinasasabikan pa rin niya ang pag-ahon ng tubig alat sa dalang pasiga. Kinamamanghaan pa rin niya ang paglubog ng araw sa hangganan. Paghinga pa rin ang dulot sa kanya ng kalmadong karagat. Kabisado pa rin niya kung paano ilarawan ng dagat. Ang ganda ng dagat, no? Kulay asul, malalim, malawak. Kulay asul, simbolo ng kapagapa ang laging ng hiling. Malalim, kasing kahulugan ng kanyang mga hamari. Malawak tulad ng pangunawan mo sa anumang shadow mo. Nakalipas man ang mahabang panahon, kabisado pa rin niya kung paano ilarawan ang dagat ito. Kulay asul, malalim, at malawak.
National Institute for Science and Mathematics Education Development, or UPINISMED, is a research and extension unit of the University of the Philippines. Guided by its mandate to improve science and mathematics education, NISMED performs three major functions. Research, Curriculum Development, Professional Development and Extension Services. Through the years, NISMED has been generating new knowledge regarding science and mathematics teaching in the country. Research outputs, such as teaching materials, are tried and tested to teachers and students inside the classroom. Relevant and innovative teaching materials are made available online and at NISMED publications for distribution. In addition, NISMED is highly involved in the framing of the National Science and Mathematics Basic Education Curricula. 
Equipped with subject area specialists, NISMED offers professional development programs which cater to the needs of teachers and educators in the country and Asia-Pacific region. As a teacher, I am subjected to try new trends that will fit to the glamour of the new normal education. One of these trends is VD lesson. This course is what we really need in this time of pandemic as it fits to the need of the new normal education. The dedication that UP Nismet has shown to us is really inspiring. With this, I am looking forward for more training courses not just in our school's division but also around the country. Keep inspiring and continue to work towards your institution's goal. Maraming salamat po. These training programs deepen teachers' understanding of the subject areas they teach. NISMED promotes science teaching through inquiry and teaching mathematics through problem solving. Not only it conducts training programs, but also mentors science and mathematics teachers in the elementary and secondary levels. NISMED also promotes lesson study a school-based teacher professional development model which originated in Japan and is now gaining popularity in the country. To reach out to various communities, NISMED uses different platforms online. It also ventured into television to popularize science among general viewers and used radio to reach out to more teachers and the public. To further its extension services, NISMED regularly conducts stargazing activities to accommodate school requests. It regularly opens its laboratories, providing opportunities for students to learn science and mathematics concepts and practice through applications. To conduct more effective programs and activities, NISMED partners with both local and international organizations. Committed to excellence, NISMED programs have continuously been achieving awards and recognitions. Since its establishment in 1964, NISMED continues its journey of commitment and service to lead the nation in science and mathematics education. We at NISMED commit to be at the forefront of capacity building, research and innovation for science and mathematics education.
So you're scanning the globe for that perfect country to study abroad? We have just the right place for you. Austria, located in the heart of Europe. It's home to one of the oldest and most vibrant cultures on the continent. But you do wonder how they came up with those lederhosen and dirndl, because Austrians, they like wear them all the time. Plus, lots of yodeling. Not. Want some real facts? Here you go. Size, 83,871 square kilometers. Population, 8.7 million. Capital, Vienna. Oh my, so beautiful. Part of the European Union. Of course. So what about studying there now? Austria boasts 70 top-class universities with more than 380,000 students, of which 25% are international students. Its university system is part of the Bologna process, meaning ease of mobility inside the European Union for you and mutual recognition of degrees. Some other goodies. Various programs taught in English, scholarships and research grants, as well as climate award-winning affordable housing for scholarship holders. Austria is internationally renowned for its music and arts programs. Throughout all programs offered, sustainability and environment play a key role. And for your career after graduation, Austria provides state-of-the-art research facilities across the country. Life there? Well, let's put it this way. L'Autriche, 12 points. Vienna traditionally leads the pack of the world's most livable cities. Not necessarily because Austria won the Eurovision Song Contest, high five Conchita, but rather for this country's top public transport, social and economic stability and a world-class range of cultural activities. Speaking of cultural activities, discover world-famous artworks, spend days and nights at the museum and explore architecture's finest like nowhere else. Wherever your cultural explorations take you, take it mutely. Get together and make new friends. In the mood for a party after that? Your super hip outdoor music festival, the classical music concert, or the oh my gosh, it's already 9 a.m. in the morning underground club is just around the corner. After a crazy night out, you may want to indulge in a Käsekreiner sausage at the Würstelstand and oh yeah, a sweet, sweet Apfelstrudel to top it off. Had too much? Then go out, move. Oida! Oida? You've probably never heard of Oida, but it's a word you hear all the time in Austria, meaning dude. But actually, it could mean just about everything. By the way, you definitely should get familiar with Grüssang, Leivant, Gspusi, Bocho, and Beisen. Need a break from all that Austrian? Board a train, jump on a plane, or take the boat. The rest of Europe is closer than anywhere else. Go out, explore, highlight your future, study in Austria. I'm Audrey Pe, and I'm the founder and executive director of Youth for Women and Technology Incorporated, or WeTech for short. We 
We Tech started as a blog that shared stories of women in tech and how they navigated a field dominated by men. After attending a conference in 2017, I realized that more needed to be done in order to close the gender gap in tech. From there, WeTech became a community organization and hosted various events, including WitCon, the first women in tech conference for students and by students in the Philippines. With its mission to educate, inspire, and empower the youth to break gender stereotypes and use technology for the betterment of society, WeTech has grown into a non-profit SEC-registered organization. Our vision is to achieve gender equality in the technology industry by increasing networking opportunities for every young woman interested. From a simple blog, WeTech has grown into an extremely impactful community. But wait, what does WeTech actually do now? WeTech still continues its blog that is regularly updated with different STEM articles, research outputs, and interviews from women in the field of STEM. We also have our biggest annual event called WITCON, or the Women in Technology Conference. This event exposes students and educators to a wide array of accomplishments and research of Philippine women within the field of technology. But that's not all we do. We also have other major projects such as WeTeach, an outreach program that equips Filipinos with the tools necessary for them to forward their journeys in tech, we Talks, a series of talks that center around women using tech to achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Roadshow, a series of campus visits consisting of career talks and forums on the state of tech in the country. An online tech camp, a camp for young Filipino students to participate in various STEM workshops and forums, and many, many more. Impacting hundreds of lives, we have been recognized for our efforts to advance gender equality in the field of technology and STEM as a whole. From Manila to the rest of the world, WeTech began expanding its chapters in 2019. Now, we have over 20 chapters in Asia, North America, Africa, Oceania, and Europe, working together to spearhead our mission across the globe. Every year, WeTech opens its doors to those who want to take part in achieving WeTech's goals. To know more about WeTech and what we do, visit our website, wi-tech.org, or visit us on our social media channels. Stay tuned for our future initiatives and be part of our growing global community. Join us and let's break barriers together. Before we start the program, let us have a moment of silence to pray for world peace and also in solidarity with all peace-loving citizens of the world. We will now formally start this webinar series with the singing of the Philippine National Anthem, followed by the National Anthem of the Republic of Austria. Look 
afternoon once again. Welcome to the Women in STEAM Careers webinar series launch with a the theme, Celebrating Women and Girls in Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts and Culture, and Mathematics. I am Helen Catalan of the University of the Philippines, National Institute for Science and Mathematics Education Development, or UP NISNED, and I will be your host for this afternoon's event. This webinar series is an initiative of the Austrian Embassy in Manila in partnership with the International Labor Organization, Department of Education, the National Institute for Science and Mathematics Education Development, and the Youth for Women in Technology Incorporated. As this webinar series is in observance of the UN International Day of Women and Girls in Science, it is only fitting that we begin with a message from a staunch advocate of women and girls' empowerment. To give her welcome remarks, let us all listen to the Austrian Ambassador to the Philippines, Her Excellency Ambassador Vita Resulian. Pleasant afternoon to you all. The future of work is constantly evolving, especially in the midst of a pandemic, jobs are being modified and new ones created, many of them requiring knowledge and skills in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, the so-called STEM disciplines. Disciplines which help cultivate skills such as problem solving and innovation. But sadly, girls are still today not given the same opportunities in these fields, which are traditionally highly male dominated. The She Figures report, the main source of European comparable statistics and gender balance in science, shows that the number of women studying and pursuing a career in research is slowly growing in Europe. Still, women remain significantly underrepresented in specific fields, such as information and communications technology and engineering, and their potential is not fully really recognized or valued. This points to the persistence of gender stereotypes in STEM disciplines. Worldwide, there is a growing demand in the labor market for graduates of STEM subjects, also in Austria. Reducing the gap in STEM education will help reduce skills gap, increase employment and productivity of women, and ultimately reduce occupational segregation. This would foster economic growth via both higher productivity and increased labor market activity. However, despite good employment opportunities and highly productive jobs in this area, there's currently a low proportion of women studying and graduating in STEM subjects worldwide. We must acknowledge the urgent need to increase the number of women in STEM fields and act swiftly. Austria is among the leading countries in the EU in R&D intensity and expenditure, 12 billion euros, which translates to over 3.2% of its GDP in 2020, while the EU average stands at roughly 2%. In its gender equality policy in science and research, Austria adopted a policy mix of strategies, instruments, and measures to address gender imbalances and increase the percentage of women in STEM related fields, which currently stands at roughly 35% in Austria, tendency rising. Today, as part of our commitment to promote gender equality and the empowerment of women and girls in these fields, and in celebration of the International Day of Women and Girls in Science, the Austrian Embassy in Manila has partnered with the International Labour Organization, the DEPED, the UP National Institute of Science and Mathematics Education Development for the Women in STEAM Career webinar series to address gender issues in science and technology and promote equal opportunities for the access of women to STEM education and career opportunities. I am very pleased and honored to be joined by some of the most reputable speakers in the STEM industry who are here to inspire you with their stories and in some ways facilitate access to STEM education and career opportunities so that you may realize your career goals as future female scientists, researchers and technicians. Let us work together to create gender equal platforms where all talents can thrive and recognize the potential of women and girls to STEM and society to sustainable development and a more equitable society for all. Maraming salamat, mabuhay ang mga kababaihan sa siyensya. Thank you, Ambassador Bita Resulian. 
The continued support of the Austrian Embassy for initiatives such as these the will be one of women and girls as they continue to break the glass ceiling in the STEM fields. The International Labor Organization, through its programs, has been exceedingly proactive in bridging the gender gap in STEM. To give his message of support, let us now listen to the Ad Interim Resident Coordinator of the United Nations Philippines, Mr. Khalid Hassan. Your Excellency Ambassador Vita Rosalind, Secretary uh, Department of Education, Lenore Rinos, Women Innovators, Inspiring Women in Science and Technology, colleagues and fellow supporters of the girls and women in STEM, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honor for me to convey to you the following message from the United Nations Resident Coordinator, Gustavus uh, Gonzalez, who could not join today. A colleague will speak later to deliver a message on on uh, this partnership with the International Labor Organization, but let me share this message on behalf of the whole of United Nations in the Philippines. Early this month, we celebrated women and girls in science, technology, engineering, arts, culture, and mathematics called STEAM. And there is much to celebrate as you will hear from the speakers later in the program. It is important that we send a strong message to girls and young women that an education in STEM and a career in science, technology, engineering, and related fields is as much for them that is for boys and men. In fact, with the challenges we face today in the world and in the Philippines, we need a science community that represents and understands the lived experience of all people. This is crucial in order to find the right solutions and innovations needed to solve the problems. And we have the problems to solve and the world is facing some enormous challenges, not least with the COVID-19 pandemic, which is now entering into the third year. We are also experiencing other serious crises, such as the impact of climate change. More recently, we have in the Philippines experienced a crisis within crisis. When the response to Typhoon audit was obstructed by the surge of COVID-19 cases at the same time, adding another layer in the complexities of getting help to the affected communities. It is obvious that to take on such a challenge, we need to harness all talent and we need the full and equal participation and leadership of the women and girls in science and in technology. A recent UNESCO report found that globally, only 33% of the researchers are women and they are awarded less funding than men and less likely to be promoted. Only 28% of the engineering graduates are women. When women found their own startups, they receive less than 3% of the total venture capital compared to men. These underrepresentation must be turned around so that we can create and sustain science and technology communities that are as diverse as the community we live in. Otherwise, we limit our abilities to find inclusive, sustainable solutions to increasingly complex problems, and we fail in building a better society for all. Our core principle rules, also when it comes to education, leave no one behind. Through the UN socioeconomic and peace building framework for the COVID-19 recovery in the Philippines, called SEPF in short, the UN agencies in the Philippines have a clear roadmap for our support to ensure that people's needs are met and their rights are upheld. This is also important in science and technology when we aim for the transition and deliver the services better to all, we need our brightest scientist mind, scientific minds 
to be engaged women and men. We need inclusive and accountable science and technology ecosystems free of bias and discrimination to be able to accelerate sustainable development goals and address the challenges that impact us all. So let us together recognize women contribution in science, research and innovation. We must put the principle of equality into action so that the science works for women as students, researchers, professors, innovators and experts. So that the girls and women see a clear and a rewarding career path in the STEAM, in the STEAM field. Today's event is an important step on the way. We convey our appreciation to the Austrian embassy and its partners for bringing us together to have this urgent conversation and for the upcoming workshops. I wish you a successful learning and exchange of ideas. Thank you, Salamat Paul. Thank you, Mr. Hassan. As the participation of women in the nation's economy is an important driver of economic growth, the ILO support to initiatives such as this is an important one as it underlines the significant role women and girls play in the STEAM landscape. We are pleased to have with us the Senior Skills Specialist of this Regional Office for Asia and the Pacific to give the message of support on behalf of the ILO Country Director. Let us warmly welcome Ms. Akiko Sakamoto. Secretary Lenoa Briones on Education, Secretary Fortunato de la Pena of Department of Science and Technology, and Her Excellency Ambassador Vita Rasulia of Austrian Embassy Manila, Executive Director Sherio Monderula of University of Philippines, National Institute for Science and Mass Education, Distinguished guests and scientists from the Philippines, um, Dr. Toneto Tocciolin, Dr. Chuna Avedetto, and from Austria, Trin Eva Schneider. Officers and members of Women in Tech, White Tech, teachers and students from DEPED and DESTA. Ladies and gentlemen, Magandan Hapon. ILO recognizes the crucial role of women and girls, not only in the world of work, but in our society. We celebrate them as we mark the UN International Day of Women and Girls in Science and soon International Women's Day. We are most grateful to our Austrian Embassy for this partnership. Together, we hope to inspire and encourage more women and girls in science and technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics, or STEAM. We also like to thank the Department of Education and White Tech and the UP National Institute for Science and Mass Education for co-leading and bringing together teachers and students. We have here for the first time key government agencies in science and education and the brightest women scientists from the Philippines and Austria to share their inspiring journeys. The world needs science, challenges brought by technological challenges, demographic transitions, climate change, and then COVID-19 requires the brightest minds and uh, innovative solutions. Despite the huge demand for skilled professionals uh, in STEAM, we still lack women, as noted by the previous speaker, who wish to pursue careers and education to get there. I alone in the STEM program for the past five years, equipped women in a critical, so, uh, critical soft and technical skills. We want them to get access to decent work and advance in their careers, particularly in information technology. Our goal is to train and employ and prepare more women in STEM and to make a career progression in this STEM related jobs. This is in very much in line with that our Decent Work Country Program of the Philippines. Together with TESDA, we provided the scholarships and developed the e-learning. We supported the job readiness and STEM integration in technical vocational training. So far, over 900 women completed a program 
and pursue the tech-related careers in animations, website, and game development. I like to share one story. One of them was a uh, honey, a uh, honey Santana. When uh, Honey dropped out of college, she hardly imagined herself as a web developer, which is her dream job. Then I noticed a woman can do, uh, do it. Uh, scholarship offered a pathway when she saw it on social media. Honey finished the course very successfully, and she was among the three women in her class to receive an internship. A leading global IT service company offered this, where, offered this and when, where she specialized in robotic process automation development. Currently, the Honey works at the major telecommunication company developing a robot that can automate manual processes. Our story highlights how STEM paves the way for professional development and in gender equality and the decent work. The Austrian embassy came across Honey's story online and then our work on a woman in STEM. We are most, once again, grateful for this collaboration. This is a step to close the gender gap and to prepare women and girls for the future of work. We urge um, more international collaboration to seize opportunity in STEAM. Every woman and girl in this room has potential. May this inspire and encourage many of you. Science and gender equalities are vital for the human-centered recovery from COVID. We need to make education for all and a decent work for all a reality. This is laid in ILO's global call to action for human-centered recovery that is inclusive and sustainable and resilient. We count on your support to make this happen. Together we can empower women and girls in STEM and then build a better future, a uh, future work that leaves no one behind. Maramin Salamapo, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Ms. Sakamoto. The ILO support to this initiative is a testament to the crucial role of women in work and in society. The story she has shared has surely resonated with the women and girls who dream of exploring STEM careers. Let us now listen to one of the partners of this initiative whose programs aim to strengthen the STEM education in the country. To give her message of support, let us warmly welcome the Director of the University of the Philippines, National Institute for Science and Mathematics Education Development, Dr. Sherilyn C. Monterola. Her Excellency Ambassador Vita Rasulian, Austrian Ambassador to the Philippines, Mr. Khalid Hassan, Ad Interim Resident Coordinator, United Nations Philippines, Dr. Akiko Sakamoto, Senior Skills Specialist, Regional Office for Asia and the Pacific of the International Labor Organization, Secretary Leonor Magdolis Piones, Secretary of the Department of Education, Ms. Tinardes M. Veloria, National Project Coordinator, Women in STEM Workforce Readiness and Development Program of the ILO, Ms. Madeline Michelle, Press and Cultural Officer of the Austrian Embassy, Manila, Dr. Manila, uh, Dr. Maria Antonia Entan Chuling, Professor and Director, Institute of Civil Engineering of University of the Philippines, Diliman, Dr. Chona Camille Vince Cruz Abeledo, Associate Professor, Department of Biology at the La Salle University, Administration and Staff of UPNISMED, members of the GAD Committee of UPNISMED, friends, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. In the Global Gender Gap Index 2021 report, the Philippines placed 17th out of 156 countries and ranked first among Asian countries. In the said report, our country profile shows that we rank first in terms of female participation in legislation and senior administration posts, where 50.5% of legislators, senior officials, and managers account for females. We also rank first in terms of professional and technical workers, where 61.6% of them are females, in contrast to 38.5% males. However, in terms of estimated earned income, the males are getting more compared to females. In terms of education attainment in STEM, the report shows 44% among males 
whereas it is only 18% for females, especially in the field of engineering, manufacturing, and construction, where the greatest gender gap is observed. In 2019, the Philippine Business for Women Coalition and Empowerment commissioned a baseline study on women in STEM in the Philippines to the Unilever Foundation STEM Plus PH program. Results of the study showed that the enabling factors that promote gender equality in the STEM industries were as follows. The presence of supportive parents, spouses, other family members, managers, and co-workers, personal interest in STEM-related skills and positive attitude toward meeting the challenges at work that keep women in STEM engaged. In addition, being in a company that promotes gender-sensitive policies and programs also enable in, in women in STEM careers to remain in their fields. The media's positive portrayal of women in STEM has also been inspirational to many women in STEM. On the other hand, some of the barriers to gender equality in STEM industries include the male-centered culture and environment in the workplace, as well as male dominance in leadership and management positions. More importantly, women also experience difficulties in pursuing work-life balance that they aim to achieve. But through initiatives such as what we are having today, we wish to demonstrate how various organizations and industries can collaborate with one another to advocate and support the advancement of women in science, technology, engineering, arts and culture, and mathematics. We hope to encourage greater participation of women and girls in STEAM by stimulating the interest of our female learners in STEAM-enabled and STEAM-related fields. We also hope to inspire you by bringing you closer to women in the STEM fields. Listen with pride to their stories and interact with them directly. In the coming webinar series, you will see the convergence of STEM in a lot of fields such as arts and culture. We are grateful to our collaborators, the Austrian Embassy, the ILO, DepEd and VTech for this great opportunity to champion women and girls in STEAM. To our dear participants, we hope to see you not only today, but also in the next three webinars on March 8, 18, and 28. Let us celebrate together greater participation of women and girls in science, technology, engineering, arts and culture, and mathematics. Mabuhay po tayong lahat. Thank you, Dr. Monterola. Indeed, through the collaboration of the relevant stakeholders, we hope to help break the barriers and make the STEAM careers more accessible to women and girls. This webinar series launch will not be complete without a message from the Department of Education. Let us now listen to the keynote message from the Secretary of the Department of Education, Secretary Leonor Magtolis Briones. Good day, fellow women and girls in science, technology, engineering, arts and culture, and mathematics. Now, there is no better way to celebrate the continuing milestones and breakthroughs in STEM slash STEAM education, except to acknowledge and empower women even more, especially the marginalized sectors of society in an ever modern and integrated global village. The Department of Education is proud to continue advocating and advancing the cause of women empowerment as we firmly believe that for the world to become a better place for everyone, women should take an active and co-equal role with women. Historically, before our conquerors landed on our shores, women always had equal, if not even more, uh, even greater uh, leadership roles in Philippine society. There were queens, there were warriors, 
they were priestesses, they were healers, and they were also artists, even as they were mothers and nurturers. And so we have the STEM program, for example, which is a teaching philosophy that integrates the four disciplines of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics together into a single cross-disciplinary program, which offers instructions in real-world applications and teaching methods. This means STEM uses the integration of the four disciplines in solving real, current, and urgent problems of society. At the core of STEM are real-world applications. But at the same time, STEAM, as in S-T-E-A-M, is an educational approach to learning that uses science, technology, engineering, the arts, and mathematics as access points for guiding student inquiry, dialogue, and critical thinking. Albert Einstein has once stated that, quote, after a certain high level of technical skill is achieved, science and art tend to coalesce in aesthetics, plasticity, and form. The greatest scientists are always artists as well. So STEAM education is a teaching approach that fosters learners' interest in STEAM courses by fostering individual capabilities of expression, innovation, and aesthetic perception of which innovation is most important. In my own uh, personal experience, I have seen manifestations of the um, relationship, of the linkage between, for example, what we generally describe as hard sciences vis-a-vis -vis the so-called soft sciences. Many of you know that I belong to the Manila Concert Choir, and for decades, our conductor, Dr. Romy Pisania, was a PhD in mathematics, but he knew his music, he knew how to, to interpret choral uh, renditions and choral works. And I believe that his being a mathematician uh, was a great help to his being a great musician as well. According to S.S. S. Rupert in his book, Critical Evidence, how does the art benefit student achievement as cited by uh, Dina Azadi in her article, Arts in Science Education. And probably this explains why in many universities, arts and sciences are always blended and never separated. What students learn in the arts help them master other subjects, such as reading, mathematics, or social studies. Students who participate in arts learning experiences often improve their achievement in other realms of learning and life. It also says that multiple studies confirm the findings that students who take music classes in high school are more likely to score higher on standardized mathematics tests. I already mentioned our choral conductor in Manila Concert Choir. There was a time when our accompanist was an engineer, was taking his PhD in mathematics, but was a very good and excellent pianist as well. And one of the complaints, for, uh, for example, of our conductor always is, you should know how to count because music is also about counting notes, counting time, counting rhythms, and so on. And musical training in rhythm emphasizes proportions, patterns, and ratios expressed as mathematical 
relations. And so the arts nurture a motivation to learn by emphasizing active engagement, disciplined and sustained attention, persistence and risk-taking among other competencies. I know, for example, that the a former dean of the College of Music of uh, one of our great uh, universities, uh, which is the University of Santo Tomas, is not only uh, a PhD, but he's also a PhD in mathematics as well. And he is a first-rate performing pianist. And I have watched him perform four Rachmaninoff concertos for two hours and with not a single note uh, in error. And that is perhaps due to his training also in mathematics, in rhythm, in counting, and in keeping uh, oneself uh, on track with the requirements of music. And so there are also properly documented indigenous knowledge systems and practices on science uh, in the Philippines. And it therefore makes me very happy and excited that more and more women are entering in what used to be male dominated areas of science and engineering. We in the Philippines are very fortunate in that we never prohibited our girls from going into areas of activities where men are also active, mainly science and mathematics. We have female doctors, we have female researchers, we have female uh, pilots, and I rode in a helicopter which was managed by a female uh, pilot with great ease and confidence. And of course, female musicians who happen to be mathematicians uh, as well. In 2017, three girls, girls from Davao, earned a place in the galaxy as their names were, you know, uh, labeled or given to three asteroids which, which were discovered by the MIT. Lincoln Laboratory uh, near uh, Earth Asteroid Research Program, and they were part of that research, and these asteroids were named after them. Uh, another uh, team of girl scientists proved that the acacia bark extract is an effective organic insecticide against the adult rice bug, and this is very significant because rice is a major, major food item in the in Philippine uh, food and uh, gastronomy. This young scientist from Davao National High School brought home the second grand award in plant sciences during the Intel International Science and Technology Fair in Los Angeles, California. And she's a girl. The advancement of STEAM education in the Philippines is immensely significant, um, therefore. And we in DepEd, we who are inheritors and who continue the tradition, the practice of allowing girls to achieve their dreams, to go beyond training them for, for housekeeping or for uh, also for taking care of their family because they are expected to take care of their respective families. And we always struggle to continuously improve and innovate the special science program. And we welcome girls. There is no distinction between girls and boys in so far as STEM, in so far as STEAM also is concerned wherein we combine the attributes of hard sciences and the beautiful aesthetic versions of the soft sciences like art and culture. 
And so uh, congratulations. Thank you to all of you for this uh, initiative in uh, celebrating women and girls in science and technology, in engineering and in the arts. Thank you also to the Australian Embassy for helping us out as you have always helped us out. Thank you one and all. Congratulations. And we look forward to even more girls, even more women contributing not only to science and technology, but bringing in the soft touch of art and culture to the so-called hard sciences. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Leonor Magtolis Briones. We are truly grateful for continuing to inspire women and girls to venture into STEM careers. We will now have a photo op to document this event. If you can, kindly turn on your video and give us your best smile. Sir Jess, please. Okay, ready po. Okay, first frame. Look at the camera. One, two, three, smile. Look at the camera, smile. Isa pa. Okay, tingin lang po sa camera. Smile. We now come to the second part of our program with a guiding theme, Inspiring Women Innovators in Science and Technology. To share with us a background on the Women in STEAM Careers webinar series, it is with great pleasure that I give you the National Project Coordinator, Women in STEM Workforce Readiness and Development Program, International Labor Organization, Ms. Linartes M. Deloria. Thank you, Ellen, and good afternoon to everybody. So welcome again to the 2022 UN International Day of Women and Girls in Science. You know, uh, we are here together with students and teachers from DepEd, from TESA, from UP, for you to be able to hear from our scientists from Austria and the Philippines on what are the careers that uh, there are in science, technology, engineering, as and also as the secretary also included, arts and culture and mathematics. No? So I'm sure by now you've heard from all our speakers, you know, that careers in STEM are really the jobs of the future. Unfortunately, while this is the jobs of the future, actually we are seeing how important STEM is right now you know, during the pandemic. There's still not a lot of women who are getting into these careers. And usually some of the barriers that we're seeing in, um, in, in the studies you know, that have been done on this is that we lack you know, the role models on women in science. You know? Especially for us girls, it's so important for us to know that there are other women who have gone this journey before us. Right? And it's so important for us to get into these careers, especially with the rise of automation, interconnectivity, machine learning, all, all these real-time data that we're hearing. Careers in science and technology, engineering, and mathematics are now the jobs that you should look forward to. And so even if you also are not also looking Looking at the career in the traditional careers of being a doctor and engineer, it is so important for you to have these critical STEM skills, for you to be agile and flexible, especially when, especially in the changes that we are experiencing now, to make sure that you are resilient throughout the changes in the economy. And so this was why the Women in STEM Workforce Readiness Development Program was developed in the, by the ILO around four years ago. Our program is in three countries. We are in Thailand, Indonesia, and in the Philippines. In Thailand, we were in electronics. In Indonesia, we were in automotives and ICT. In the Philippines, we started first with the ITVPO sector, since this was the first sector that we saw which was most vulnerable to automation. We have expanded even further in cooperation with uh, the Technical Education Skills Development Authority in sectors such as agriculture, electronics, transportation, and tourism. In the last four years, we have focused, you know, on how it is that we are to promote, you know, career, career leadership, career promotion for women and girls in STEM. And we focused on three basic things. First, we wanted to successfully transition, you know, underprivileged women, you know, from vocational school graduates. If you saw the video a while ago, you know, 
into STEM-related employment with sustainable careers prospects. Because, you know, like, you know, the, the myth is true, no, that there are very little, there are very few women who want to get into careers in science. And we wanted to make sure, you know, that all women, you know, women and girls are not afraid to start into these careers. And so what we did was we increased access to training of employment opportunities for over 900 women workers. And that includes, that includes even our overseas Filipino workers who were taking our courses as far away as Moscow and Spain. Second, because we wanted also them to prepare them for employment, we designed with TESA online job readiness trainings. And actually, you can see that you know, on the TESA online program, wherein we provided you know, a job and e-learning course on job readiness. How do you prepare for a job you know, in industries in STEM-related occupations? You know, how can this help you facilitate your entry to employment? We also included collaborations with the U.S. Embassy for Coursera for English for STEM and English for Business. Maybe, maybe you're good in science, but you're not very good in communicating. And so we also partnered with them for these courses. These are just some of the photos, you know, of the women who have successfully finished, you know, our scholarships. That included the story that Akiko was mentioning about the story of Hani. You know, Honey was in high school, I was a college dropout, you know, who never imagined that she would be able, you know, to become a web developer, which was her dream job. I think she's, she's somewhere here in these pink girls, and this was in 2018. And you know what, you know, she, she worked really hard because she was able to get that opportunity to become a web developer. She was one of the interns chosen at Indra, Indra Philippines, Indra is a data analytics company based in Spain. And that was where she learned how to do robotic process automation. Fears from now, she still is working as a robotic process automation. And she witnessed, you know, how technology changed the lives and changed the job. She saw literally a whole department of, you know, of people doing um, customer service for a company, you know, automated through the work that she was doing. And also, in addition to this, we wanted to promote career development and leadership. Maybe you are a woman in STEM. Maybe you are an engineer. Maybe you are a doctor. Maybe you are a professor uh, at the College of Education in Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. What kind of skills do you need? What kind of skills do you need to be able to advance in the workplace and become role models of people working in your company or in your university? And so we provided enterprise-based learning opportunities on critical soft skills and peer training for women in STEM-related industries. This is an example of a poster that uh, Ingram Micro, a, a very big science company that is based in US, the US, promoted to women employees here in the Philippines, encouraging more women, you know, more women to engage in these skills training and at the same time be able to be part, you know, of of the bigger of, of the company that will lead women in these careers. These are just some of the photos, you know, of the women who have gone through these programs. These are engineers from IBM, from Accenture, from Point West, from HSBC, all of them, you know, all of them were interested. How, in, how is it that I would be able to stay competitive in this industry to solve skills? And when we went, and when the pandemic happened, you know. Um, it was not a reason for us to stop. We shifted to an online uh, soft skills training program wherein it was a way for us to engage with more women across the country, you know. And in fact, we even went up to Indonesia online, of course, wherein we were able to provide these training to women who were needing this training for soft skills. So these are just some of the partner companies that we have worked with in the past four years. Um, women engineers, women technicians, you know, who have participated in this program. And finally, we wanted to increase access, you know, the training opportunities for women to advance in the workplace. We wanted to create that enabling environment so that we can continue these training programs that we are having. And this is why we are partners with DepEd, with the UP National Institute for Science, uh, Mathematics Education, and also the Austrian Embassy. 
you know, one of the things we did was we organized the Stanford Workforce Readiness Technical Working Group. We wanted to bring all, you know, all the different government agencies concerned in promoting science, technology, engineering, and mathematics to ensure that we are provided with that access so that we are provided with, you know, the policies needed for workforce readiness. We developed an e-learning course on integrating STEM with DESA. And Dr. Cheryl was very, uh, was very instrumental in making this possible to mainstream appreciation, not only for learners, but also as teachers as well, right? I mean, we, we may emphasize this for our teachers, but uh, for our students, but if we don't also provide them with the capacity to teach this, especially now and that we are doing this online, we need the right pedagogies to be able to convey this message across. Um, these are just some of the workbooks and we hope, and we are looking forward to doing this as well with the Department of Education. And it, as you can see here, you know, STEM is not only in those career areas, industries that we think there is, you know, whether you are taking contact center training, whether you are doing electronic, electric installation and mechanic and maintenance, or even cookery, these have all components of STEM in it. And it's so important that we have this core work skills so that we will be able to stay competitive in the workplace. Um, and also we've worked with uh, industry associations to make sure, you know, that um, those working in the work those women in STEM in these workplaces are able to advance in the workplace. So for today, you know, as I said, it's very important for us girls, you know, to be able to see the role models. You know, it's important for us to see like that is a career in STEM. This is who I can be if I wanted to explore a career in STEM. And so this webinar series was designed, you know, was designed for you to be able to get to see online what does a woman in STEM look like. What does, you know, are they, you know, what kind of work are they doing? What can I, what can I study to become one of these women in STEM? And what are the tips that they can give us so that we may be able to become a woman in STEM? And, you know, as, as uh, Akiko said, you know, every woman and girl here can be a woman in STEM. And it's never too late for you to start the journey. And this webinar is designed for you to be able to explore these opportunities. So for today, you know, so we are kicking off with two speakers today. Later on, uh, I think our, our speaker from Austria will not be able to join, but we have two uh, amazing, we wanted to put the coolest, to put the coolest speakers the first, and then more cool uh, speakers uh, in the next few days. We will have Dr. Tan Shuling. She's a professor and director of the Institute of Civil Engineering at UP Diliman. And of, of course, also Dr. Chona Camille Vince Cruz Apilado, Associate Professor of the Department of Biology from the De La Salle University. They will share with you the cool things they're doing as women in STEM. And we hope that it will inspire you as well to become a woman in STEM yourself. So in the next few days, these are the, these are the topics that we will be sharing with you. And there will be, we will, um, you know, uh, wait for the announcement that we will be having on our speakers for these topics. So on March 8th, Women's Day, we have the Art of Science and Math Teaching. So if there are, if there are teachers out there who want to use art for science and math teaching, that it can be used to make it more interesting. But at the same time, you will find out. And I love that the Austrian Embassy is here with us. For those who are aware of the sound of music and also are aware how it's so important for them, you know, um, how important arts and culture is important to them and how they find, you know, the great combination of science and math and arts and culture. So I hope you also um, attend this Art of Science and Math teaching. This is for our teachers so that you would be able to bring to your classroom, you know, more interesting ways of making science and math teaching more interesting to your students. On March 18, we have full steam ahead, inspiring women in science, technology, arts, and culture and mathematics. So we have invited um, two Filipinos who are combining technology, uh, technology and the arts. And from Austria, um, they are bringing, uh, was that Das Electronica? You will see later, it's a fair that combines electronics um, arts uh, and science, so something that you, 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 would, you would not want to miss. 
And finally, women in STEM leadership, leaders for a post-COVID world. You know, I'm sure you have been seeing the news how women have stepped up, you know, especially for um, a lot of science research that has been happening during COVID-19. We know, for instance, that the, uh, the vaccine for um, is this um, for well, some of the vaccines have also been um, made by um, uh, by uh, scientists or by women scientists. Let's hear from what they are doing in climate change, in health sciences. What are they doing during this pandemic, and how can we learn from the lessons that they have? And so, um, I hope you stay tuned also for. Um, for the next webinars that are coming in. But for today, in a few minutes, you will have our um, two main speakers for today for our Science Diplomacy Workshop, Women in STEM in STEAM Careers webinar launch. So I'll, um, with that, I leave you with this line this, um, in the UNICEF study on towards an equal future, reimagining girls' education through STEM. It said, we cannot afford to live in a world where scientific and technological solutions are desperately needed and exclude half of the world's population. We need girls and women participating in this process. So with that, thank you very much. And I hope you enjoy the webinar series in the next few days. Over to you, Helen. This account is worth retelling as it is truly inspirational. Women and girls can explore and have access to pathways to the STEM careers, to take control of the narrative, and to be part of the STEAM landscape. So we now proceed to the main event. Before the introduction of the panelists, I'd like to inform the audience that after the last presentation, we will be taking questions and fielding them to our panelists. You may want to note down these questions. You may write your questions using the chat box. Alternatively, you may use the raise hand button. Please wait for the moderator to recognize you and allow you to unmute yourself. May I also remind the audience to mute your microphone during the presentations. Thank you. Let's now proceed with the presentations. To introduce the panelists for this afternoon's webinar, may I call on the Press and Cultural Officer of the Embassy of Austria, Manila, Ms. Madeline Mitchell de Olanda. Ma'am. Thank you very much, Dr. Helen. It is indeed a pleasure to be here virtually with all of you as I am tasked to introduce our speakers for this afternoon. Unfortunately, one of our speakers, Injury Eva Schneider, have fallen ill over the weekend and will not be able to join us this afternoon. I'm sure she would have loved to speak and present today and we wish her a speedy recovery. But I would like to also take this opportunity to invite everyone to attend our upcoming webinars and look forward to a lot of brilliant speakers in the STEAM field. Moving forward, I am honored to introduce one of our speakers, Dr. Maria Antonia Entenschuling. Dr. Maria Antonia Entenschuling is a professor of the UP College of Engineering and is the current director of the Institute of Civil Engineering, the first female to hold the position since the civil engineering program was established in 1910. She is the former coordinator of the Environmental Engineering Graduate Program of the UP College of Engineering. She earned her Bachelor's of Science in Civil Engineering and Master's of Science in Environmental Engineering degrees from the University of the Philippines Diliman and her PhD in Civil Engineering from Tokyo Institute of Technology. Her research interests include solid waste management, plastic leakage studies, microplastics, environmental impact assessment, water quality management, and water and sanitation. She is the chairperson of the Philippine Association of Tertiary Level Educational Institutions in Environmental Protection and Management, and also sits as a vice chairperson of Tao Pilipinas, an NGO which assists urban poor communities plan its settle settlements. She is a founding partner of AMH Philippines, an engineering consultancy firm, and is the vice chair of the Environmental and Energy Engineering Specialty Group of the Philippine Institute of Civil Engineers, and also the advisor of its Student Affairs Committee. And to welcome another brilliant speaker and panelist for this afternoon, I am pleased to introduce Dr. Chona Camille Vincecruz Abeledo. Dr. Vincecruz Abeledo 
is a faculty of the Department of Biology and leads the Molecotech research team at the De La Salle University. She is also the creator of the science blog, Shi Yen Sha, fueled by her advocacy in the improvement of communications between the scientific community and other sectors of society. Dr. Vince Cruz Abeledo is a recipient of the 2021 Outstanding Asian Science Diplomat Award and honored as one of 2021 Southeast Asian Women Science Leaders. She has a diversified background in research rooted in Bachelor of Science degree in Molecular Biology and Biotechnology from the University of the Philippines, Diliman, which is completed by a Master of Environment and Natural Resources Management degree from the UP Open University. Her dissertation work on the molecular and morphological char characteristics on Scylla species in the Philippines celebrates the synergy between genetics and ecology. As she completed it from the De La Salle University with Fulbright dissertation grant to the University of Washington in Seattle. Innovations from this dissertation won her the DOST PCI EERD's 2015 Outstanding Research and Development Award for Emerging Technologies. She is actively engaged in citizen science projects on the impacts of climate change in conditions of coastal communities and the assessment of plastic pollution in different ecosystems. Without further ado, I would like to give the floor first to Dr. Maria Antonia Entanchuling to be followed by Dr. Vinci Cruz Abeledo for their talks and presentations. Thank you, Shun. Maraming salamat. Mabuhay po tayo lahat. Thank you, Madeline, for that introduction. Thank you so much to the organizers for inviting me, for giving me this opportunity to be part of this launch of this uh, regarding the uh, where we want to encourage girls and young women to to go into STEM. I just realized you know, I, I'm really happy that I, I started listening from the start. I realized that it's my first time to speak, you know, to be part of a webinar on on women. So it was my previous uh, my previous talks was all about plastic or solid waste. So I think it's going to be very interesting. I learned a lot from all the messages of the, the previous speakers. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. I'm so, going to, to talk first about um, my personal history, why I went into STEM, and then I'm also going to discuss my current research projects, the research that we are doing now. Okay, so why did I go into STEAM? So I have to be very honest. I checked with Dr. Monterola earlier. What is the A in, in STEAM? Because all I know is STEM. But it really helped also listening to Dr. Briones, Briones' uh, talk so that helped me understand what the A is for. Akala ko lang kasi hot, no? steaming hot. Pwede rin. Anyway, so if I may share, I can, maybe I can identify four factors which influenced me to go into steam. First is family. Um, my my, my first role model of a woman is my mother, who is a pharmacist. So it was never in our family. By the way, I have five older brothers and one sister. So it's male dominated in the family. But we did not ha have any gender stereotypes. So growing up, I did not have notions of what women and what women and men can do. Uh, for us, it was all what humans can do. So there was no division between the, the genders. My father is a mining engineer and he was equally supportive, of course, of whatever for him and for my parents, whatever career would make us happy, uh, they would support it. Second is that my 
because my father is a mining engineer, we grew up in mining towns. So in the in the beginning, I think in the when the Americans started the mining, the big mining uh, activities in the Philippines, they had to put up communities to encourage the engineers to bring their families there. So at a very early age, because I was born there, and at a very early age, that was my exposure. All the engineering uh, processes I was exposed to, like, I remember my father bringing me to an open pit mine. I don't know how many of you have you have seen an open pit mine, but at that time I thought I was being brought to a playground because I can see the huge heavy equipment, the huge trucks. But from if you look at them down below, they look like toys. So also I would see at a very young age like how gold can be extracted from rocks. So it was like a natural, uh, the exposure was there. And number three is a personal interest in mathematics. So I think this would validate what Dr. Monterola was saying earlier in her message that studies show that it's really the, the family support that is the main driver for, for girls to go into STEAM as well as personal inclinations. So I had this inclination. I, I wouldn't say, especially when I went into college, I wouldn't say I'm really good in mathematics, but it was interesting and I enjoyed solving the, the problems. And number four, also, is a desire to solve the pressing problems of humanity, which can be solved by engineering measures, such as, especially for, uh, for me, until now, unfortunately, no, we still have a huge portion of our population having no access to potable water supply. So these are the drivers that that encouraged me to go into this career. So my current job now, as uh, what was said in my introduction, I'm, the, I'm a professor. Also, I think it's first female professor at the civil and environmental engineering. And yeah, the current director and the founding engineer of AMH Philippines a researcher as well as a board member of Tao Pilipinas because I, I really like working with uh, communities and using engineering to, to be able to improve uh, their conditions. So now I will share with you a bit about my research interests as was also explained in the introduction. So, it's all about solid waste management, plastic waste management, and water and sanitation. So now if I may go into more detail, I'll start with our work on plastic waste management. I think you've heard of this report that there are around as much as 2.7 million tons of plastics are estimated to be leaked to the oceans. Uh, it's estimated amount being leaked to oceans every year. So this paper was published in, in April 2021 and they identified the rivers which contribute uh, the plastics to the oceans and topping these rivers are seven rivers from the Philippines. So it is indeed a global problem, but more so in the Philippines. So this is something that we need to address. So in two years ago, in 2020, this is our main output during the pandemic. We, we prepared, we, we developed the plastic flow in the Philippines. Like we wanted to know how much we are consuming and where each part is, how much is being recycled or how much is being uh, leaked to the environment. 
So from our analysis, we see that we're consuming around 2.1 million tons of plastics, but only 9% of these are being recycled. So these are mostly just the hard plastics. These are mostly just your pet bottles and your rigid plastics. And we don't recycle much the film plastics, the sachets. These are the problematic plastics. And 35% are being leaked to the open environment. So that's a lot. Uh, that's what we have to address very urgently. And a very small percentage is being recovered as refuse-derived fuel. They are used as fuel in cement kilns, and a small portion is being exported. So because of all of these studies, there are so many opportunities because of the urgency also. There are many opportunities and need at the same time to study this situation and, and look for solutions. Now, one aspect, one additional impact of plastic pollution are microplastics, is the, the pollution from microplastics. So what are microplastics? These are the plastics which are, well, technically they're being defined as those that are sized five millimeters or less. So they are the byproduct of the degradation of the bigger plastics. For example, we throw away our candy wrapper in the river or even anywhere, somehow it ends up in a body of water and then it gets degraded through UV radiation, through mechanical abrasion, and then eventually they will be invested ingested by our marine animals and then that's how they can end up in the food chain. So the, we are also doing studies on uh, microplastics. So one of that uh, studies is presented and it's part it's now part of a book chapter. Maybe you can uh, access it. But the title of our work is Microplastics Occurrence in Surface Waters and Sediments. And here we share our the results of our studies of the microplastics found in river mouths draining to Manila Bay. So we looked at five rivers draining to Manila Bay and two rivers draining to Laguna de Bay. So here we see the amount of microplastics that are found in surface water and in sediments. So you can see there, uh, there are a huge amount. And of course, this, also, this is also affected by the hydrodynamics of, of Manila Bay, where it would take, there's a retention time you know, for, for all the, for the plastics to be flushed out. So that those are results of our studies. Now, a DOST project that we are finishing now, it's called IWASTO. It stands for Integrated Waste Analysis Survey and Technological Options. This is part of the I Am for Manila Bay program, which is the our effort, our contribution for the rehabilitation of Manila Bay. But for our part, we're trying to look at the solving, because there are two main pollutants of Manila Bay. This is the coming from the sewage and coming from the solid waste. So from, from for our project, we're, we're tackling the problem of solid waste management upstream meaning we'd like to see how the communities are are doing it so i hope you visit our uh, facebook there's supposed to be a link here but i'll just use the poster to show you our uh, the features of our project but i hope you you like our facebook page there project iwasto so in project iwasto 
So it's a two-year project that we're extending for three months. Uh, there are so many um, challenges brought about by the pandemic. You know, our field work is limited. But anyway, we carried on and we were able to get a three-month extension. So we're supposed to finish in, in April. So in Project Iwasto, we'd like to come up with, first, we'd like to characterize the waste, the waste management practices, and other environmental, social, economic, and technical considerations that are in the communities. And then from there, establish and waste utilization technologies, which can address the solid waste management problem. So we are tackling the problem on biodegradable waste. So we have uh, composters and also biodigesters. And for plastics, we'd like to process the felt plastics. So we have plastic densifiers. The technologies were developed by DOST, so we're not doing it from zero. We're just deploying it in the communities and making sure that the communities have a buy-in uh, for the technologies because we have observed that many technologies are not being used by communities, maybe, and that's what we are looking at, what's, what's wrong, what, what went wrong. So we'd like to have more participation for communities to ensure that the use of these technologies are successful. So for this, we have three partner barangays for uh, one in Manila, one in Navotas, and one in Malabon. We will be happy to share with you the results no, when, when the time comes. And of course, it's our, again, I'd like to advertise our Facebook. You can also see the, the updates there. And all of this, we need also policy support. And uh, that's why we're looking at specifically uh, revising the solid waste management plan and also uh, the checklist for the local government units on in evaluating their uh, solid waste management system. So for that, we're working closely with the national government agencies. And as I've said, community involvement is very important. So that's why we have a strong uh, a community development component also and because this is our framework uh, we believe that we have we have to tackle the problems upstream we cannot solve the plastic problem with the cleanups even if we do it every day um, we need to tackle it upstream in a scientific way so these are just some of the Photos And by the way, one component also is the development of a mobile app. I was reminded you know, uh, by our next speaker is a citizen science expert. And so we will, uh, we'd like to use citizen science in involving the citizens for waste management and also a database which the local governments can use, which the public can use to access our waste data because we believe that an informed citizenry is would bring about vigilance no, regarding uh, waste management. So again, we'd also like to invite you, maybe we can partner with NISMED when we want to popularize this app. And of course, we need your comments, your, your reviews no, for, to further improve our project. So that's Project Iwasto. Okay, in, in many of the local government units that we are working with, we, are, we prepare waste flow diagrams such as this one. This is from Nairobi. These tools have already been developed um, on a, because we want to standardize data regarding waste management. So it's called WasteWise Cities Tool. Here we can see, we can quantify the wastes, the types of waste and where are they going. So in this way, we have data 
to use to base our policies on. But this is also uh, useful for monitoring. Uh, so this is a tool that the local government units uh, will find useful if we really want to, let's say, improve our recycling. We need to have numbers, numbers that are, again, based on evidence, based on scientific data. So here, we really want to promote policies that are that have solid basis. The, the numbers here are actually SDG indicators because we need to collect those data also, how much recovery rate are we having? And uh, there's a special uh, parameter for, for food waste and also the amount of waste that are going to managed landfills. And then, so we're doing a lot of uh, stuff like that. So to share with you the ongoing projects that we have, uh, we're also doing a lot of plastic field surveys. So if you are, uh, maybe if you ask me one thing that I really enjoy with being an environmental engineer is being out there in the field. So it's really, it doesn't feel like work. It's just one big adventure. Um, if you want to go places literally, and these are also places that you may not be able to visit or you may not be able, you may not think of visiting because they are out of the tourism areas, but still they are very interesting. While at the same time, you're contributing something. So there, uh, we're doing plastic field surveys. We've done some for like how much plastics are there in our tourist islands. Uh, we've, we've done it for Siargao, Sikihor, and, and Bohol. Uh, we also have to look at our islands, which are relatively not yet polluted, so that we, have, we can think of interventions be before they become uh, really polluted with plastics. And then the plastic leakage studies, this is related with a, with a waste flow diagram that I showed earlier, but with plastic leakage studies, we will be able to identify at which part of the supply chain would the leakage happen? Is it during collection? Is it during transportation? Is it from the junk shops or is it from the disposal sites? That way we are able to define where, how, how do we intervene? We are able to develop the intervention mechanisms that are needed. Uh, right now, we're also doing a study on looking at the microplastics in sewage. So our initial studies would show that we have a lot of the type of microplastics that we see in sewage are from textiles, from washing our clothes, our clothes, if they are not 100% cotton, they're made of plastic. So they also end up in, in sewage, especially if we don't have sewage treatment plants. No? Although our initial studies would show that our current sewage treatment plants are able to remove these microplastics, the problem is that we don't have enough. Uh, a, a very big portion of our wastewater is not yet treated. And then finally, uh, we have to address problems upstream. So we're also involved in several policy research studies, such as uh, developing the roadmap for the phase out of single use plastics. What are the impacts of our uh, banning or phasing out single use plastics? What are these plastics that we can phase out? When can we do it? And also the roadmap for the extended producer's responsibility where we will ask the producers of plastic packaging to pay a certain fee uh, depending on the amount of packaging that they put out in the market to be able to pay for the collection, disposal, and recycling of the plastic, especially of the low value plastics. That's the end of my presentation, Dr. Monterola, and thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tanchuling. Uh, we're going to proceed first to the presentation of Dr. Chona. 
uh, a beledo, and then uh, afterwards we're going to have the open for group. Okay, thank you so much. I hope everybody can see my presentation and that I can be heard. So good afternoon, everyone. It is um, such a pleasure and an honor to be speaking with um, Dr. Tanep Chitanchuling this afternoon, and you know to be given this opportunity to talk about our STEM, our STEAM careers. <clears throat> Sorry, um, my name is Chona, and I've been a teacher for almost 15 years now, and I've been a scientist for almost as long. Um, recently, I also started a YouTube channel, a website, and a social media page called She Ensha, where I try to talk about the science behind everyday things, my fascination with the, envi with the environment and ecology, and also, it gives me a platform to showcase amazing women in STEM in the Philippines. As a scientist, I worked on genetic engineering, uh, but please don't, don't hate me for that. Genetic engineering is not necessarily bad. Um, and we mostly use the technology to help improve abaca strains in the Philippines because of the problem of the abaca banchita virus. I've also worked in the documentation and validation of traditional environmental knowledge and management of indigenous peoples in the Philippines. I've studied the taxonomy, systematics, and population genetic structure of mangrove crabs. And now we're working on the development of low-cost technologies to help in species identification and improve grow out practices of alimango. So if you like alimango, hopefully we can make it cheaper in the future so that we can enjoy it more. Hopefully, hindi lang tayo magka-high blood in the process. Um, my team is also involved in the use of citizen science techniques to help with our plastic pollution problems. And it's so amazing that I'm here with Dr. Tan Chuling because a lot of her papers were actually our references in the papers that we're doing. So I'm a little starstruck. So please don't mind me if I'm a little nervous right now. Now, did I ever imagine myself doing all of these things as a child? No, not really. As a kid, I had two dreams, one of which I was proud of and another I kept secret. The dream that, that I was proud of was to be a scientist and an astronaut, specifically an astrobiologist. I wanted to study life out there in the stars. A dream that was serious, badass, and acceptable if I wanted to be a woman who would be taken seriously. My secret dream, and I'm still embarrassed to say this out loud, was to be a beauty queen. I've always been fascinated by pageants and fashion shows. These women were so beautiful, they were so confident, and they walked and talked like they were always in control. I wanted to be like them, but the world and maybe society around me, whether consciously or not, told me I couldn't. I was not beautiful enough to succeed in this field, and that ventures like these were too poofy and frilly and would not really lead me to a path where I can create an impact. Well, I guess I'm glad that we now exist in a world where we sort of know better that we don't have to give up being pink and pretty and feminine in order to do badass things. <clears throat> now, my road in STEM was far from calm. I took up a degree in molecular biology and biotechnology that taught me how all living things are interconnected at the molecular level. It also showed me how controlled changes in the DNA can lead to dramatic effects in an organism. But after getting my diploma, I found that I was in a world that feared these kinds of technologies. So I ran away literally to the mountains for my master's degree, studying upland rehabilitation techniques and worked with indigenous peoples on validating their environmental practices. And then, after getting my diploma, I found that I was in a world where low-tech and traditional, no matter how effective, was not cutting-edge, award-winning, or even sexy. <clears throat> so I decided to make my PhD and subsequent research a marriage and a celebration of both worlds, molecular and ecological, modern and traditional. I finally got lucky and found a tribe of people and experts who appreciated the beauty of this. 
and it won us a DOST Shirt Award for Outstanding Research and Development. And it even got me to Seattle and to do a portion of my dissertation for a Fulbright grant. So as Dr. Tunet said, in science, you can go places and a lot of times for free because you're doing research. Research and gala together equals love. <laughs> but throughout these experiences, I always questioned whether what I was doing was enough. I was working from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. in the lab, plus a three-hour three commute from my house to school. And this really took its toll on me. For example, my mother passed away and I wasn't, didn't take a vacation to help take care of her or to even mourn after her passing. I was back to work three days after she was buried. I was so convinced that the only reason I had the positions and opportunities I had was because I was working harder than the next person. And my value was just that. I worked hard. It took me developing hypertension at 32 years old in a pandemic to realize that my time was more valuable than any position. And that even though some people have to work 18 hours a day in order to sustain their lives and their families, it shouldn't be this way. We have to create a society wherein we don't have to throw away our lives, our loved ones' lives, and our health to earn income and to create a positive effect in other people's lives. I'm very excited to be part of that change. But going back to STEAM, what skills do you need to be a publishing scientist and a project leader? Well, for one thing, I'm proud of my science writing skills. You have to be able to write smart, express yourself in as few words as possible, as completely as possible, and as little jargon as possible. Trust me, that does not make you sound smart. This has helped me publish some of my studies and even some of the studies that my senior high school students have helped out with. But something I learned over time is it's difficult to do good science alone. So another talent we should hone is in facilitating discussions. There is strength in diversity, especially in a diversity of ideas and creating an atmosphere where different ideas end up supporting each other rather than destroying each other is something that will make our science and innovation better. And then finally, of course, we don't have all the time in the world to do everything that we want. So we have to learn to manage the time that we want to allot per day to working. This involves planning a schedule that is open to sudden changes due to opportunities we can't pass up, such as being invited to webinars like this. Yay. Time management involves knowing your priorities and having the courage to say no to certain things. Yes, sometimes you have to be brave to say no. Being a yes person kasi means having a lot of opportunities, but it can also mean having little to no energy left to put <clears throat> into activities that you are passionate about. So sayang lang din. Now, please note, that I wasn't born with any of these talents. I had to learn them along the way. Science writing was learned after so many rejections from editors and criticisms from mentors. But those critiques were precious because they helped me become better. Facilitating discussions is also painful for me as I am a very awkward introvert. The only reason I look confident right now is because we're in front of a computer. If this was in person, I would be shaking right now. Although I am shaking because I am nervous right now. But despite my fear of communicating with people or to people, I know that the gains from having them, from having discussions, make the pain worth it. So I watch how other amazing people do it. I mimic. I optimize, and I try, and I try, and I try. And time management, I'm still perfecting that as I go, especially since my priorities change over time. But it's all about knowing what is most important to you and not compromising those for anything. And I guess at the heart of all this is, you don't have to do it alone. 
Be open to receiving help and don't be afraid to ask for help. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. So as a scientist, there's this myth that if you're afraid of math, you go do the biology route. <laughs> well, let me tell you that is not true. <laughs> Math is at the core of science, and it was only when I learned not to be afraid of it that I realized the power of science. In my case, it was statistics and the various programs at my fingertips that brought sense, structure, and power to my analysis. Understanding simple t-tests and ANOVAs can lead you far, and mastering multivariate analyses like PCA, DCA, and so on can take you so much further. Now, integrating your research with other disciplines would help to create for more holistic solutions. For example, one of our lab's iconic products is called Crabifier. It's an app that identifies the species of juvenile mangrove crabs, something that was impossible until we made this discovery. The markers I found using molecular biology techniques were hard to distinguish using the naked eye and thus would be useless to our fishermen. But with the help of fellow scientists from the College of Computer Studies, we found a means to detect these markers using just a mobile phone app and even a low-end camera. So coordinating and collaborating will get you closer to creating a more realistic solution to the problems you are trying to help solve. Especially since the techniques you learned in high school, college, or even grad school will eventually become obsolete, some more quickly than others. So you have to be open to learning new techniques, even new ways of looking at the world, so that you can continue on your quest to, under, in, to understand the natural world. And so even at my point, I've earned the letters to my name. I'm a PhD holder now, yay. I'm running my own projects and holding administrative roles <gasps> at last. But is that it? Nope. I still have many things to learn and that excites me and scares me. It scares me when I'm feeling exhausted and when my imposter syndrome kicks in and tells me that I could never be enough. But it excites me and energizes me on good days because I know I'll never be bored with science. I'm turning 36 in a few weeks and I just learned to ride a bike last week. <laughs> I'm currently trying to get over my fear of claustrophobia and the limitations of my hypertension by learning how to dive and get my paddy license. That was me doing that back roll in that video over there. I'm so proud of that because that really scared me. <laughs> I want to learn how to identify corals and other underwater species. I want to learn not to be afraid to be a leader because the only difference between us and the people who look like they know how to do things is that they decided to learn about it. And so we shall too, right? So all of these projects and ad adventures I've done because I decided to be part of the academe. Since I graduated from UP in 2007, I've been working with De La Salle University as a part-time faculty for 12 years and as a full-time faculty for just the past three years. For 12 years of my life, I had no medical insurance, limited benefits, living in a no work, no pay scheme. I incurred debt, I incurred health and psychological problems. Was it worth it? I think it's too early to tell. But I learned something the other day in a, fire in a fireside chat with Dr. Cheryl Monterola, who's here with us today. The concept of adversity quotient. It's the ability of a person to handle difficult situations well, and it's very much linked to the concept of resilience. And a lot of people in the field of education seem to have this. But what can be scary about it is some people seem to think that we should continue giving people a hard time before they achieve something just because they went through hard times to get the position that they have right now. And that adversity makes us better. Perhaps there is some wisdom to that, but this same process can kill creativity 
it can kill diversity and it can kill the ability of young people to create a stable base to come from and learn more and be greater than us. The economy is not what it was like decades ago. It's significantly worse. And I believe one of the factors that's killing science in the Philippines is the contractual nature of work that people who want to learn science are stuck with. How can you do an impactful thesis when you can't pay rent the next week, or if you have to commute three hours to work because you still have to live with parents to make ends meet? How can you focus on science if you know you can't pay to get a medical checkup after a dive or a research trip? I don't have all the answers right now, but our system needs to be more empathic to the needs of our young teachers and young scientists. And I hope my voice and the voices of others like me who believe in the same thing can help facilitate this change. Now, as a scientist, I've been privileged to have gotten some notable achievements from publications, which are currency, which are our currency as scientists, to scholarships that allowed me to survive as a young professional, to awards that honor my ability to communicate science to a wider audience, which is how I define what being a diplomat is, to honorifics that value my ability to lead, which is a mix of courage to dive into the unknown and the confidence to help young people to learn. Achievements are cool, don't get me wrong. They give you a hit of dopamine that makes you happy and addicted to what you're doing. And they make it a little bit easier for you to push your projects and advocacies. But achievements and awards are also about luck knowing the right people, putting in the right keywords in the right year. And it's not a full reflection of who you are. And there will, all, there will also always be someone better at you than something. So we shouldn't be blinded by our achievements, mostly because it can lead us to overcommitting to something impossible and dragging down others in the process. For example, a lot of people compensate using the fake it till you make it approach. You feign confidence and know-how until you've actually gained it so that more opportunities come your way. I've seen this work so many times for so many people, so it's not really a completely bad thing. But what if it doesn't work? What if it was never really possible to make it work? Have you heard of Elizabeth Holmes and Terranos? If you haven't, do a quick Google search. That's my biggest nightmare over there. What if I end up promising something that I can never fulfill? So her story makes me cautious, but it also doesn't stop me from risks. I just become more calculated, more investigative, and more responsible for the choices I make. And as a scientist, I focus more on the service that I can do rather on the me aspect of it all. And so we celebrate the activities that we get to do, meeting amazing people from all over the Philippines. Yes, mahilig din po ako maggala. From the northernmost tip of the island of Luzon, such as um, our trip to Bugay, Cagayan, to the southernmost edge of the island of Mindanao, where we did fieldwork in Lanao del Norte. We deployed Krabby Fire while also learning about traditional practices unique to different regions in the Philippines that can help fishers in other regions in the country. We've seen the devastation of pollution and climate change, which led to the opening of so much more research possibilities. Because that's the thing about research. Where there are problems, we are needed. Only when we've solved all the problems in the world that's the only time we will become obsolete. So my team is gearing up to do a citizen science project with Pasig City to determine the types of plastic waste in the Pasig River through our Echo Squad Goals initiative, which is currently funded by UNDP. We are hoping to move forward with our Daga Track project as well, a project that seeks to look at the fluctuations of our ocean waters, pH, temperature, salinity, and connect them to the responses of key organisms to help fishers and environmental managers adapt to climate change. We are in the worst of times, and thus we 
as scientists need to be in our best. But that's the science part of my life. What's next for Chona? Well, I'm excited for the new Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet games. They just announced it recently. So excited for that. I'm also excited to continue growing my YouTube channel and finding better ways. Um, oh, sorry. Why am I going back? <laughs> there you go. I'm excited to continue growing my YouTube channel and finding out better ways to make the Filipino people appreciate science. Now, will I ever be a beauty queen? I don't know. <laughs> but I'm curious to try and be a social media influencer, perhaps. People keep talking about how toxic social media has become. But maybe if enough people with love and tolerance and joy speak out more, then maybe this powerful network could also be a force for good. Who knows? I might fail and fall flat on my face. But the thing is, I won't know until I try. And there is no box confining us to what scientists should be and how a scientist should look like or behave. We are free to chase our dreams and learn in the process. And so that's it for me today. If any of you are interested in collabs, scientific or otherwise, please don't hesitate to email me. My email address is on screen. And if you love science or, and are interested to learn more about it, please like, follow, subscribe, and share my content in the social media channels listed below. Thank you very much, everyone. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you very much, Dr. Tanchuling and Dr. Vince Cruz Abeledo for giving us a glimpse of your researches and projects and sharing the skills that need to be developed to be more effective. We also don't have to choose between family and career. And you have shown us that through engagement with communities, a number of problems that beset our society can be addressed and be improved through STEAM. And more importantly, with hard work and passion, you have continued to break the glass, the glass ceiling in the, STEM, in the STEAM fields and also how we define what a scientist is and what beauty is. We will now entertain questions from the audience. We will have Dr. Sheridan C. Monterola as our moderator for the open forum. Ma'am? Thank you, Dr. Helen. Good afternoon once again, Prof. Tonet and uh, Dr. John. I'm so proud of you reading your stories, the powerful messages and the moving stories that you shared. Uh, solutions that are really touching the communities uh, the, with, the way, uh, with the work that you have been leading. And uh, some of the words, I just want to mention some of the comments coming from our audience. Like, uh, they're uh, really awed by your, uh, the work that you have shared, and uh, they are very inspiring, and they can relate to what you are doing. So um, as we uh, harvest more questions for you coming from our audience, so I, I will alternate from, you know, uh, asking some questions are uh, directed to Dr. Pantuling and then sometimes uh, to Dr. Chana, and then sometimes some questions will be uh, addressed to both of you, if that's okay. But uh, thank you so much for this time. And we are all in awe. Uh, there were a lot of messages going to the chat box, private messages, but they were just simply in awe of uh, what you have shared and what you have been doing, really amazing. So um, here's the first question, probably to give a breather to Dr. Chana. So this address first to Dr. Net, uh, Dr. Net. So ma'am, um, you mentioned that the number one source of microplastic waste are from textile. Uh, does the use of ukay-ukay, it's something that's familiar in the Philippines, which are usually not in mean quality, contribute to this? What can we do po, policy-wise? Yes, I'd like to clarify that the textiles, the microfibers, are found in sewage. No, so it's not the number one. If, if we look at the microplastics in rivers, for example, it can be coming from film plastic, like coming, uh, can be originating from carrier bags. No, so I just want to clarify that. It's just the, the textiles would be number one if we look at the microplastics in sewage. Okay, so regarding... Uh, ukay, ukay. 
it doesn't uh kawawa naman ng ukay-ukay no but it's it's really just from washing clothes so in in Europe now with their washing machines they have ratings for the fibers that can be filtered that's how they are addressing it so for us policy wise i think the best policy is to ensure that we have adequate sewage treatment facilities so that this micro fibers this microplastics would be released to the environment yeah. uh, thank you very much uh, dr chuding for the clarification and also for mentioning about you know the uh, the policy research that's more directed towards you know increasing the technology for uh, filtering you know, the the uh, involved in the sewage uh, treatment. Thank you, Dr. Chuling. Uh, for Dr. Chona, um, and I think we, we, uh, this can also be answered by Dr. Chuling afterward. Um, there was this question from uh, Miss Kat, uh, and uh, she uh, and, and here's her, her question. I was wondering what kept you going through those times that you were faced with multiple challenges in life. And um, Dr. Chana, uh, what um, powered you know, through those challenging times in your life? And probably later on, Dr. Net can, uh, Dr. Net can share uh, her stories as well about this. Thank you for that question, Katrina. Thank you for sharing, Dr. Share. Um, Wow, Miss Universe question. Hindi nga ako Miss Universe, pero may Miss Universe questions naman. Grabe. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to say or pinpoint what it is that kept me going. Kasi during times when you are undergoing that hardship, ang hirap, ang hirap makita kung ano talaga yung reason. But in, in my case, I guess I was, I was privileged that my, my family, as Dr. Monterola mentioned, the, effect, the impact of family is very important. My family was very supportive of my dreams. Never ko silang narinigan na, bakit mo ba ginagawa yan? Hindi ka yayaman dyan. Thank God. I never heard that from them. And in this case, I'm, I'm sorry sa mga mommy at daddy dito. I had a very supportive boyfriend who eventually became my husband who, who has been with me throughout this entire journey and he he keeps me positive he keeps me going and yun hindi hindi ko ma-achieve yung phd kung wala siya he he he's been really this super strong supporter beside me and then at the end of it i want to help change our current systems yung pag ako nahihirapan parang ang lungkot kung yung susunod sa akin, mahihirapan pa rin in the same ways. And I'm not talking about mahirap mag-review sa exam, kasi mahirap yan, lagi. Hindi yung mahirap intindihin yung method sa lab, hindi yun eh. Yung mahirap yung sitwasyon, kasi ganito yung sistema. Gusto kong maabot yung point na makakatulong akong baguhin yung sistema. And that's why I kept on going, kasi otherwise, sayang lahat ng effort. So in that's that's my answer. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Ned. Yeah, uh, by the way, I I was also inspired by Dr. Chona's sharing, no? And pwede ka pa ring mag beauty queen. You never know. Ah, uh, <laughs> siguro merong parang may Miss Science <laughs> or Miss Science. Anyway, um what kept me going? Siguro, if I may share, no, what were the most uh, difficult times? Mahirap ang engineering. Aktivista po ako. Uh, nung I was a freshman in 1983 when Ninoy Aquino was, was killed. So that was the peak of the mass movement. I was with a student council. Uh, hindi naman po sa pinagyayabang ko, no? pero I'm saying this to inspire you. I was also the first female student council chairman of the College of Engineering. And that was 1986 for the EDSA revolution. So during that time, nahihirapan na ako uh, with the, you know, balancing. I would always say I had 16 units of academic unit. Uh, I had 16 units for my class at 16 or 18 and another 18 for the rallies, for the meetings, no? because we wanted to oust 
Marcos and the dictatorship. Um, so at that time, what kept me going? Hindi pwed, hindi ako pwede magbags, mabagsak. I mean, I wasn't the top of the class, but at least wag na, at least you show up in the class, no? At uh, keep up with your academics because how can you lead? If your classmates don't see you, how, how can you be credible to them if you cannot even keep up with your, your classes? No? So, uh, and even my father, yun din naman ang ano ko sa tatay ko, uh, yung, yung aming agreement, no? uh, go on with whatever you are doing, but remember you're still a student. So yun yun din ang iniisip ko I wanted to shift to other uh, less academically demanding courses siguro but at that time I also thought of the need to have engineers who have strong social awareness no na, who will think of the impacts on the environment on the people of all the infrastructures that are being built so that that is what kept me going and so kahit pa paano nakatapos naman ako and i always tell this to my students sa tingnan niyo ako hindi naman ako I, i'm not even a cum laude uh, pero naging teacher naman ako <laughs> uh, and siguro mas understanding nga ako sa students na, na nahihirapan no academically so ang siguro ang pinakamahirap na na stage na nadaanan ko when I was taking my PhD, hin, uh, I did not finish on time at nag-extend ako. Ika ng aking Japanese uh, supervisor, I enjoy life too much. That's true. Uh, masyado akong maraming social activities. At that time, so ang daming pressure siguro dahil... Uh, away from the family my, my father was dying eventually he passed away i also had my health issues but what kept me going was the again yung i reminded myself kailangan ako ng bayan ko um kailangan ng ng mga tao sa sa ganitong field kasi kulang na kulang pa so sige lang uh, Kumbaga, a year or two from now when you look back at the hardship, wala na yan. And at that time, no, what also kept me from being very, very down talaga, kasi at the end of it all, kahit anong stress hinaharap natin, hindi mo ikamamatay yun eh. So what if I don't have a PhD? Ano pa rin naman ako? I, I'm still worthy. No? hindi ka failure as a person. Uh, yun lang. Siguro you have to have a strong sense of who you are, of what your values are. So maganda yung sinabi ni Dr. Chona na these achievements are actually superficial. No, It doesn't say... Actually, I would always say no, the awards, you got the awards because you fit the criteria. No, it doesn't mean you're better than the rest of them. You fit the criteria and you submitted. You were nominated for that award. And if you lost it, it's not the end of the world. Ano pa rin naman? Nandyan ka pa, ikaw ay marami ka pang contribute sa lipunan. So yun yung lagi kong iniisip. Nung, nung muntik na rin talaga akong hindi makatapos. Actually, at that time, I wanted to quit except that I don't want to quit anything that I started. Pero kung baga, if I were given the choice, sana hindi na lang ako nag, nag PhD. Pero nandun na eh. Konti na lang. And siguro when, when times like those happen, siguro you have to uh, kung baga, look at it from a third person's point of view lumabas ka no means especially studying in a foreign country no uh, nakayo kayo lang parang maliit na bagay na papalaki so kailangan siguro ng break you also need to to have a break no from from time to time and yun ang lagi kong sinasabi it's not the end of the world so what kung wala akong phd 
no eh hindi eh hindi kinaya pero uh, nandiyan ka pa rin naman no but as long as you are honest as long as you are hard working may contribution ka sa lipunan palagi yon yun lang Ah, isa pa pala. So, nung ano rin naman, nung yung PPC, ako sabi ko dapat inaaral ko din itong ma- ma- maayos. Yung, uh, may, may, uh, may dissertation was actually about how, kaya ako napunta sa solid waste management, no? how contaminants are being transported through clay liners no? underneath landfills. So, inaaral ko ano ba mga basura na pupunta sa landfills. So, naisip ko yung kailangan kong seryosohin ang academics ang 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 pag-aaral kasi there will come a time because people think so highly of PhD holders so paniniwalaan kanila kahit anong sinabi mo so you better know your stuff no minsan i would say it's too much adulation no for pero sige na lang kung but do it uh use it in a positive way no you use it for for good so yun yung mga pressure yung hindi man pressure pero parang nagpush sa akin galingan mo para mas may maiaambag ka like sana with this talk may ma-inspire tayo mga girls no to go into engineering into stem yun lang ang haba kong magsalita so dr monterola mako maraming maraming salamat dr net saka dr chona no Napaka uh, napakaganda ng mga na, na mention po ninyo. I, I I think napakadaming uh, makaka-relate no, do sa ating uh, audience po ngayon na hindi siya rosy teacher all the time. Uh, it can be bumpy. It's not a straightforward journey. Pero yun po ano yung maganda yung sinasabi ni Dr. Chona at saka ni Dr. Net na hindi ganoon dapat yung konsepto natin na pag hindi mo nakuha agad wala na no. At uh, kag- gusto ko yung sinabi nila na Uh, mayroong mga learning opportunities do sa bumpy journey na yon no minsan yung mayroong konti ka na um, detour o kaya man ay parang say, parang ano siya no parang uh, mayroong sanga no parang ganoon pero okay lang yan kasi you are learning along the way and uh, yung sinabi ni Dr. Net na kasi meron kang anchoring no yung social awareness tapos kailangan mong galingan kasi kailangan mong magbalik para sa bayan at nako maraming maraming salamat po Dr. Chona at saka Dr. Net at Mukhang dito sa susunod po nating tanong ay meron pong parang uh, para po ito sa inyong dalawa. Uh, ito po ay galing kay Ma'am Erlina Ronda. Ma'am, Ma'am Lines, would you like to uh, say it verbally po? Uh, Doc Lines is in uh, is in the Zoom room. Doc Lines, please, please go ahead po. Uh, thank you very much uh, Ma'am for your sharing which are both very inspiring. I was wondering because you shared your research. So, what have been some of your challenges in being a woman researcher in the Philippines? I was wondering how how did you manage to collect the data? How, how you know, you know, and and also what about the challenges of uh, STEM professionals? Not everyone would become a researcher. Some would be STEM professionals. So, what would be some of the challenges, especially in terms of um, getting work? and the work environment. Thank you very much. Dr. Chona, would you like to go first? Thank you. Okay, po. sige. Um, thank you for that question, Doc Lines. Um, I think I can I can think of three key aspects where um, I face challenges as a female or a woman in a STEM profession here in the Philippines. The first is when we were first defending my currently biggest project which is on the mangrove crab sa Pag-aalimango I actually encountered this question from one of the panelists Tingnan mo naman yung itsura niyan Mukha ba yung marunong mag-research sa Alimango? Baka nga diring-diri siya sa putik So one of our panelists actually prejudged me on my appearance because I had colored hair because I was wearing makeup And because I was wearing heels during the proposal presentation, I didn't know I had to wear field clothes in order to prove that I was competent or that I had to not wear makeup or I should look a particular way. But I guess you just have to trust me that yes, kaya kong dumusong sa burak, kaya kong mag-research sa alimango, hindi ako takot humawak sa alimango, 
at kaya kong makipag-usap sa mga mangingisda sa Pilipinas. Kahit babae ako, kahit yes, kaya kong mag-make up, magsuot ng pink at ng high heels pag ako ay nasa tamang lokasyon. Of course, you won't wear high heels pag nasa field ka. Sayang yung high heels ko. Oh my God. I mean, di ba? Appropriateness. So, that wasn't the first time that I got that. But did it force me to change my aesthetics? At one point, yes. But eventually, I decided that no, I should create help create an environment where my students would not have to, 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 to force themselves into boxes in order for people to think that they're competent. Our publications, the work that we do, the way we speak should be more than enough to show that we can do something that we promise to work on. Now, the second thing is when it comes to funding. Um, we have this inherent system in the Philippines na lagi pong delayed yung funding in such that if you are a young research associate, sometimes you have to wait three to six months before you actually receive your salary. And that's where we lose talent. Yung iba sasabihin nila, pera lang yan. Pero hindi eh. Paano ka mabubuhay independently kung wala kang pera? Paano ka magbabayad ng rent, ng kuryente, ng tuition fee? Kung delayed ng three to six months yung, pinag, yung, yung pinanggagalingan ng pambayad mo. And I hope that's something we can improve on in the future. We have the same funding agencies across the decades. We have the same institutions receiving that funding. I believe we can create a way to make this better for our young students. Kasi dinaanan ko siya. At sumasakit yung puso ko na dinadaanan pa rin siya ng mga research assistants ko. Hindi na tama. And gusto ko sanang makaghanap ng paraan na matulungan sila. And then lastly, um, when, when, when you are finally in an administrative position, you will encounter situations where people will not take you seriously just because you are female and just because you are young. I've recently experienced that as I've started heading the, the La Salle University's um, Brother Alfred Shields Marine Station. And during the first instances where I was putting my foot down on a particular system in the Marine Station, I experienced um, some form of harassment from one of the male members that were responsible for implementing this system. I received a very scary message in the middle of the night from this person that was mocking me. And I had to choose what to do the next day. Will I report this and risk sounding like I'm overacting? Or will I not report this and open the possibility that he will do this to some other person in the future? So I decided to report it no matter how uncomfortable it made me feel. Of course, I was doing my best to phrase my message in such that it won't sound hysterical or it won't sound like I was overacting. But at the end of it, what he did was unprofessional. And it will make you think, kung lalaki ba ako, gagawin ba niya yun sa akin? So these things still happen in the 21st century in high-end, educate, well-educated systems. This person also had a PhD from the UK. You would think, ha, huh, well-educated siya, hindi niya gagawin yun. Ginawa niya pa rin. Hindi garantiyang ang PhD na mabuting tao yung may hawak nun. Or na hindi siya sexist. Or hindi siya mananakit. And so, those are some of the things that I encountered. And they can be scary. Like, like Dr. Tonet said, parang ayoko na, parang kailangan ko ba to? Kailangan ko bang mag-admin role? Wag na lang. Pero hindi eh. Sometimes we have to, if, if we want to make things a little bit better, sometimes we have to, to be brave, to face our fears, to try to do the right thing so that some of these things won't have to happen to other people. So yun po, thank you. Sa akin naman yung question, no? ano, ano yung challenges? Uh, one concrete challenge siguro sa akin, right after college, I applied for a job in a government agency. Hindi ko nasasabihin kung ano, but related to water because I really wanted to work on, on water. 
I wasn't accepted kasi babae ako and I asked why. Uh, paano daw pag magkaroon ako ng either or paano ako magsi-CR. So, I wasn't as brave. Minsan kasi siguro yung bravery will come with age. Pero kung ngayon yon, although ngayon bawal na yon, di ba? Uh, kung ngayon yon, sasabihin ko sana, adi tatayo din ako. Kasi, di ba, bakit kayo mga lalaki, mahilig kayo umihe kahit saan saan. So, hindi ko na lang din tinuloy, but that's the most concrete way. And yung... And then the others, siguro, wala naman. I, I'm fortunate that I think before, I'd like to acknowledge, for example, Dr. Guevara. She was the first, Dr. Rowena Guevara. She's our, she's the first female dean of the College of Engineering. So, kumbaga, she set the, she's a trailblazer. Uh, so, kumbaga, marami ng barriers na, natanggal because of her example. So, which made it easier uh, for us. Kung meron man siguro there are some uh, yeah regarding the field work no this is what I I tell people also na yung yung stereotype nila na pag babae madali man dire or or hindi kaya the physical uh, the physical demands of let's say a field work i one of the first projects i did was to inspect wastewater treatment plants and i had a male partner who felt nauseated talaga with heights and with smell no if you can if you've been to a wastewater treatment plant you you imagine the smell of a rotting you imagine a toilet na hindi nyo flinash ganon so he would feel nauseated and so we have we we divided no pag walang amoy okay ikaw magi inspect pag hindi mo kaya ako and it was it wasn't a big deal for him or for me i i think it has nothing to do with gender ano lang talaga yung constituency ng tao di ba merong kaya ko yung smell okay i'll do it kaya ko umakyat sa tangke hindi hindi ako wala akong wala akong fear of heights so pero siguro some uh, in, I, I've I've been in some ano ba awkward situations or which uncomfortable situations for example especially when I was much younger and nung bago pa lang ako uh, sa like ngayon lang sila nagkaroon ng kasamang babae and you know all the green jokes all the sexist remarks and I tell them to stop and they do Uh, I tell them I'm offended. No, I don't take it personally against them. It's just that maybe they don't know any better. They were brought up that way. And so I would give them a little lecture kung ayaw makinig. Na alam mo, hindi naman nakakatawa. You can train your mind no, to have a better sense of humor. And all of those things. And natitigil naman. Yun. Of course, there are some, siguro, what we call microaggressions, uh, especially, I don't know, Dr. Chona or the other uh, women scientists here in, in a conference, no, you would see uh, when the men talk among themselves, they talk about technical matters. When they talk to the women, they would talk about lighter matters. So sa akin naman, I don't take it very seriously. Kung ganyan kayo, bahala kayo. You know, uh, things will change eventually. You know, we, we try to do what we can. Those we cannot change, sige lang. So go to the conference and, and present your paper. Yeah, uh, that's it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shona and uh, Dr. Net, no? Parang... Um, We're learning from you that um, it's okay to stand up. It's okay to uh, really speak your mind about things that you're uncomfortable with. So, but of course, uh, there's a way to communicate it better, uh, to frame it uh, in, in a nice way that is academic. Yeah. And it would not, you know, uh, be more focused on the personal level, but really on the issue. And I think that's something that, uh, that should be understood. And uh, uh, both goes way, you know, for women and, uh, and men, actually. And um, I also want uh, to emphasize uh, the 
uh, that to highlight what you mentioned about being trailblazers, uh, you know, really uh, continuing doing your work because uh, you're setting the, an example for the others and you pay it forward so that your difficulties that you encountered would not be encountered by, you know, uh, the next generation of um, women and girls in, uh, in our field, no STEAM field. Ayan po. Um, there are more questions coming in. I hope you're still okay, Dr. Anna and Dr. Uh, here's another one. Um, I think uh, this one is shifting to a general vision of uh, for the status of girls or women in STEAM. No? Uh, here's a question, po. Can you share your vision on the status of girls or women in STEAM in the next five years, given the pertinent existing issues in Philippine education? Probably... Um, uh, the person is referring to our dismal performance in large-scale assessments and probably some national assessments linked to uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics as well, or the higher order thinking skills po. Hirap po nung tanong. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Napaka-intimidate. Pero siguro, I, hmm, I, what I've, I've been learning so far in webinars for women in STEAM here in the Philippines is that we are actually luckier than a lot of other countries because here we do see, we are number one, right? Dr. Monterola, Dr. you mentioned earlier, we are number one when it comes to having women in leadership roles in STEM careers here in the country. For once, something the number one ang Pilipinas na we can actually be proud of. Um, but that doesn't mean we don't have problems. Obviously, we do. But I think in the next five years, if we are to solve these problems, and I don't really know how, I, I don't know if I can think that big, um, I, I can see the Philippines influencing the ASEAN region in, in giving more opportunities for women in STEM, in STEAM, and in leadership in general. You see, I have this batchmate of mine in MBB, and she is leaps and bounds better than me in a lot of things when it comes to, to, to molecular biology, genetics, and so on. And she's had this amazing career in Singapore. But for some reason, I ended up being an associate professor much quicker than she did. And even though technically, if you convert the values, her earnings are bigger than mine, hers is significantly lower than the men in that country. And that's just in Singapore. And I, 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 I was surprised to hear about that because you know, for the longest time, I've been lucky that most of the men around me, you know, lahat ng associate professor na ka-level ko, pare-pareho naman kami ng sahod and so on. And our promotion is largely based on our publication outputs, our ratings as professors and so on. So I would love to see the Philippines showing our ASEAN neighbors how women can truly be amazing leaders. But before we get that, yes, we do have to address that dismal performance that we have in a lot of tests. And that is a huge challenge for us teachers. But one thing, one thing I've learned is the, the thing that scares people the most, not just girls, but also boys in general about the sciences is how it's being taught like it's something scary and difficult. Like you have to be a genius in order to be good in science and math, when it's actually just a way of looking at things. It's just a little bit of hard work on certain things if you're not inclined towards that. It's a lot of that memorization this, memorization that, without connecting it to the beauty, the magic of what it can actually do. Because for me, when I was young, it was my teachers who made me see that STEM is a magical field. It's better than Harry Potter because we can really make these amazing feats in the real world. But now when I meet some of my students who are struggling, it's because they were made to believe that I hindi mo kaya mag-science kasi hindi ka matalino. Meron silang ganun. And I don't know where it's coming from specifically, but some of it came from their former teachers. And I hope that us who are teaching STEM could be more proactive, could be more patient, could create a more stimulating environment for our students. So, Yinpa, thank you. 
Sige, I'll try to answer that, but I have to. <laughs> Admi, naisip ko nga kung tinanong to sa debate kahapon sa presidential. Well, parang hirap sagutin. No? Siya pa ini-imagine ko kung isa ako no, sa candidates. Pero, um, or siguro dahil hindi ko pa napapag-isipan, yung, I'm sure regarding the how, no, definitely we have to improve the the performance of our students. I leave it up to you, kayong mga experts in in education, no. Pero siguro may yung observation ko lang. Uh, we have to promote. We have to promote STEM as a cool. It's cool. Kasi ngayon, what's the uh, let's take advantage of social media for example. Ngayon kasi how is it perceived in media? Nerd, geeky, uh, walang walang uh, buhay, no henyo, no genius dapat pero sa social life kulang or sa fun. I think we can we can make it fun. Uh Uh, kasi those, yun yung sinasabi kong stereotypes eh. Growing up, dapat walang ganong stereotypes ang mga bata. Ano ba ang cool? Cool is when you're doing something you love. No, walang, even yung, I'm also frustrated with very, young, very, very young children who say that math is difficult. Minsan conditioning yun eh. It's a cultural conditioning uh, na na na-i-invite nila ah, mahirap yan hindi pa nga nag-uumpisa mahirap na so siguro talagang starting from formative years and maganda yung ginagawa yung effort ngayon i hope we can reach many young girls and and women and sabi nga sa isang comment dito no they need more role models no not to belittle for example showbiz ganon pero siguro yung showbiz icons, kailangan ganung level yung icons na nakikita nila mga BTS level. Although hindi ko po alam ang BTS. I know it's very popular. Pero, like maybe if we can tell them, di ba may rock stars na math, may mga PhD sa math, yung ganon. Or, you know, even... Uh, when I read Carl Sagan, I started reading Carl Sagan medyo medyo matanda na ako, I think, college. Or even after college. And I realized it, this is how science is being discussed. It's very, very interesting. No? We can combine literature and, and science and make it really um, interesting. So I don't know if I'm making sense here, pero uh, So not only for for girls, no. In general, for the general population, we have to promote uh, STEM. We have to promote science and technology, and it has to be reflected in the decisions of the, for example, the national government, the local government. dapat lahat may basis. dapat nakikita yung science, diba? In all the, I noticed not very very small things na we can start with. In Japan, I noticed when when you ask people, uh, gano po kalayo ang so and so, uh, sasabihin nila in terms of distance talaga, quantified kilometers. Dito sasabihin mo, ah, pagkatas ng dalawang kanto, kumanan ka, no? So, they're at a very young age. I think it's in the consciousness, in in the in the culture also, no? There, they can say saan ang north, south, east, west, or reading maps, ganon, small things, I think. And I think okay. this is the role of NISMED. Mas, mas masasagot nyo yun eh. <laughs> Natatawa ko doon sa, ano, natatawa ko doon sa sinabi ni Mami tungkol doon sa, kung pa, magta, yung sa, ano lang, yung magtatanong ng distance, no? pero ang sa, ang sa atin is, ano eh, uh, dire, uh, literal na direction, no? uh, movement along a space, a certain space, not so much, no? parang, it reveals something about uh, our discomfort in numbers or quantities no siguro nga po yun yung talagang dun sa numeracy aspect uh, it's something that uh, we should uh, really uh, develop early on ayan and uh, dun po sa mga nabanggit niyo kanina na parang um we really have to uh, redefine the way uh, stem is introduced no gusto ko yung nasabi kanina ni Dr. Net na uh, cool is doing something that you love and and 
if you love and if you love doing STEM or if you love something about STEM, then it's it becomes cool, no? So there's a way of uh tapping, let's say, different platforms so that uh, we can uh speak the language of our uh current generation so that you know they will understand our messaging about how cool STEM is. Ayan po. So uh, dito po magmeron lang akong babalikan na questions po sa ating chat box. So, uh, from Debbie uh, Lumanta, sab Colade, sabi niya, it was mentioned that we don't have to choose between family and career. Uh, what can we do to encourage more women with very young children to advance in their STEM career uh, given the lack of daycare centers in the country? Mahirap pong mag-encourage lang kung wala pong systematic support. We can cheer them on all the way. We can give them a positive environment. But if no one will be there to help take care of their child, it's like asking someone to choose career or anak. So hindi, hindi, hindi po fair yun. We have to create the systems in order for things to be a little bit easier for them. So, for example, in other countries, universities would have affiliated daycare centers in such that female professors can bring their kids to school, place them in the daycare during times that they have class, and have them with them in the department or somewhere else during the rest of the day. But here in the country, there are actually schools and universities where you, you are not allowed to bring your kids. And that's, that's distressful. It's, it's sad na, bakit ganun? And I hope it's clear to everyone that that, that is unbalanced towards women. Mas nahihirapan ng babae sa ganyang sitwasyon. Because we also live in a society where women are disproportionately given the responsibility to take care of their kids. So we can do all the encouraging, all the positive cheerings on, but we need to change the system. We need to create support systems for women. And I hope that we can elect people in power who would support these kinds of policies. And that's why your vote matters this coming. I, I don't really want this to be political, but at the end of it, it is. That's the only way we can help empower women in the Philippines, support polit politicians, support policymakers who will support these kinds of movement. Otherwise, if we're just going to elect someone who thinks women cannot be leaders into power, Wala, wala po. Mahihirapan po tayong mag-move forward ng ating mga advocacy. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Dead, would you like to uh, share? Yeah, wala naman akong that? masyadong maidadagdag. By the way, uh, I don't have kids. I also don't have a husband. So, kaya ako talaga minsan, I'm also not so, ano ba? Kung baga, compared to Dr. Chona, she has more responsibilities and although I take care of my my mother pero yung the fact that I don't have kids or a husband to take care of <laughs> I have so much time for my for my career kumbaga but um as an so kumbaga wala akong personal uh, experience no of yung my own child I have to how do I balance those? But as an administrator, I try my best. Although I agree with Dr. Chona, it should be on a national level, no? support for these systems. Like, but if we can have influence in our own spheres, uh, if we can put up daycare centers, UP allows it, fortunately, uh, breastfeeding uh, stations no? for, for nursing mothers, those things. So... Yun lang po. Yes, we need we need policies to support uh, women. Ako as an administrator, I uh, when the women take a leave of absence to tell me they have to take care of the kid, blah blah blah. And then pag napapadami na I ask, anong ginagawa ng asawa mo? Kausapin mo dapat ano kayo, tulong kayo, no? Hindi pwedeng ikaw lang uh, palagi kasi you also have a career. Ooh to think of. Yun lang. 
Thank you po, uh, Dr. Net and Dr. Ona. Actually, one of the visions po for NISBED is uh, to have that, eh, parang ganun, to open up to our STEM professionals, especially those located within the university. Kaya lang may ano po, eh, limited pa ngayon kasi in per, wala pa tayong mga in-person activities because of our uh, pa, uh, set up right now because of the pandemic. But uh, it's something po na we can offer as a support no, for our fellow STEM professionals na yung mga STEM plays ba dun sa, sa, sa NISMED siguro. But ano po, we'll, we'll talk about that later uh, pag uh, mas... Um, Ano na po, na-concretize na namin yung aming pong space para po doon. Ayan po. Uh, I think our uh, Lights from uh, ILO is raising her hand. Uh, she has a question, I think. So please, Lights, go ahead. I I'd like to add to what uh, Dr. Chana and Dr. Ned were saying. And I think this is something, you know, the, the support system, right? Especially for mothers. And, because it really is, you know, it really is tough to juggle all this. No? Whether you have kids or even just as a single woman, right? And um, one of the things, one of the things that we emphasize, and this is why we had the soft skills training program for women in STEM occupations, was for us to like really, you know, like uh, negotiate for ourselves. That's what uh, Dr. Net was saying. Uh, um, you don't have to carry all of that, right? Um, if you have, and this is why the value of um, the in-laws, the mother is so important for a woman in STEM. And then second is, how do you negotiate at your workplace? Like I am doing these number of tasks. How, how do you, how do you, sometimes some people don't know, no? Sometimes people don't know that you are struggling. And I think it's, it, it comes, it's not a, it's not a point of weakness, but it's a point of strength that you, diba? So, okay, I have all these research projects with you. How do I, how do I find the consensus to negotiate for more time for research? Or if you can't give me uh, non-monetary um, incentives to it, maybe it will lessen my workload. Or right, um, so it, it 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 comes with the with the enabling environment, and this is what we've also been working on, like ensuring that you know we have these policies, not just uh, not not just um, in our specific workplaces, but also for us, right? As women, no? because you know we 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 have these responsibilities and we need to stay in the workplace, especially for our amazing women in STEM. The next girls in STEM are gonna look up to you, right? And from them, ko yung ano ni Doctor Net, no? Yung hindi ka pweding gumib up, kasi de ba? Parang ilan ng alam, hindi ka pwed, hindi ka susuko, eh. And and you know na you know that it will benefit, you know, your students your uh, colleagues, your women colleagues, if you keep uh, pushing on. No? So it's two, it's ano eh, it's, it's two way also, no? We need the policy environment. Although in IBM, for instance, they used to offer the daycare centers. I think the mommies don't want to leave their kids. You know, ano? We, we, we have the tendency, we don't want to leave it to somebody we don't trust. So I think it didn't work. They were one of the first who did the daycare centers. But it's also cultural for us, right? We'd rather leave it with our our mother-in-law, ba, or our family, rather than with somebody. So, ano dene? Eh? It's it's also a balance. So, policy enabling policy environment, and also at the same time, us, ba, us as women, you know, like I cannot do this, or as as Doc Cheryl said, no, there are ways for you to ask for what you want, and this includes not just for women in STEM, but also women in general. Uh, thank you, Lights. Oh, yeah. uh, there's this question about um, sabi po nila parang um, uh, kanina, some of the questions po are actually answered um, uh, in some of the previous responses. But there's this particular question po about your thoughts on uh, socially and economically uh, disadvantaged female students. So let me read po the, uh, the question. Um, inspiring students is probably the initial step to hook students to STEAM. But there are many socially and economically disadvantaged female students in the Philippines who sometimes don't have the luxury to dream a STEAM career. Uh, what national or even local support or programs would you recommend should be in place to help sustain female STEAM students' interest without worrying about their family financial situation? Um. I think DOST has been very proactive in bargaining for 
greater funding for our DOST scholarships. So as early as undergraduate, we have available DOST scholarships that pay for tuition, um, provide allowances to our um, STEAM students. And for those who need support as early as junior high, senior high school programs, we have a growing number of science high schools all over the country. Um, I was a beneficiary of the Philippine Science High School system um, and the scholarships present in UP and so on. And I wouldn't have been able to achieve a lot of the education, a lot of the learnings I've had, if not for scholarships. Hindi po kami mayaman. Um, kinailangan ko po yung, yung, yung mga allowance sa binigay ng DOST para makasurvive um, all this time. So that, that was a huge help. It becomes a little bit more challenging when you're already starting to work. You can go back to being a scholar. There are a lot of scholarships for grad school. Um, the feedback is mixed. Merong nagsasabi na sakto lang yung allowance. May ibang nagsasabi na kulang. And so some have to go to part-time work. Um, and this is where uh, we, we encourage a lot of our students to also work part-time as research associates. And this is where we have to make our finance, procurement, and accounting services a little bit more efficient in our country kasi sila yung naapektuhan. Hindi naman yung mga batang may pader na sasandalan, pero yung mga bata na gusto nating maiahon. So those are some of the things that we can work with. But it's, it's, it's possible. I started at a salary na 3,500 pesos a month. Ang hirap. Sobrang hirap. Pero kayang igapang with, with the right support. So we don't really have to be rich to be good in STEM. There are support systems. We do need more. But I think we are moving at a good direction in finding that, that support. Would you like to add to that? Thank you, Paul. Yeah, if we want to encourage more uh, girls to go into STEM, maybe we can also have special scholarships uh, just intended for for girls. Of course, still based on merits, but maybe we can allot slots for uh, for girls and women. Like in right now, there are private donors asking mm -hmm. us. In, in engineering, you know, what special, uh, what programs can they do for, for women, you know, for gender equality. And so this is one of the suggestions we give if, if they can provide uh, special scholarships just intended for women, also awards, you know, at the end of the, like, award uh, well-performing female students yeah i i just want to also add bono uh bosc right now uh has actually 80 priority programs and uh, they are not just you know uh, funding the scholarship of the of the undergraduate students in let's say top universities like up ateneo la salle and ust you know uh, they actually uh, uh support the uh, the schooling of students in different centers of excellence and centers of development across the country. In fact, po, uh, UPNISBED is doing, is actually, we are actually preparing a STEM career guidebook for high school students. We'll be launching soon in June. No? Uh, this is funded by the USD SEI. And our, um, our uh, participants here who are teachers right now, uh, uh, please watch out for the guidebook. Po. It's something that you can uh, share with your uh, students so that uh, you'll be, they'll be able to know more about the different offerings in the Philippines and the, those that are supported by the OST. And as mentioned by Dr. Net, there are also other uh, donors or funding agencies as well. Ayan po. Uh, also, in the case of ILO, sorry po, no, just uh, to, uh, for your additional information, lang, ILO naman po has vouchers for women. Uh, particularly for uh, those who, like, who, who are interested in TVET. So like, for example, they have vouchers uh, in, co in collaboration with TESDA for web development, creative web development, game programming, and so on. So you might want to check out uh, some of the programs that they have. Ayan po. And Ms. Madeline of Austrian Embassy is actually posting links uh, for grant alerts no, 
uh, for Austria. Uh, probably this one is for ano po, no? uh, post grad um, or higher education. Uh, but it's something that um, uh, it's something that uh, you can uh, also check out. Check check them out. Uh, there's a question po. Uh, before I invite other uh, uh, other members of the audience to unmute or probably to be recognized if you have some questions and you want to directly uh, ask them to Dr. Net and Dr. Chona. There's this question po on another note and it's something that I of interest actually to everybody uh, from Doc Helen. Uh, Doc Helen, would you like to ask this question directly po, please? <laughs> Sige po, ma'am, sure. <laughs> Dr. Tanet and Dr. Chona, I'm just curious uh, what activities do you engage in uh, to de-stress? Nice. I, I love this question so much because it makes me look forward to the term break that we have here in the LSU. Um, but for me, po, I do uh, five to ten minute meditations every morning just so I don't freak out every day. I try to exercise, try being the operative word. Um, but I I love going to 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 nature, hiking, um, camping, uh, diving, and all of those things excites me a lot. But during the pandemic, when I was stuck at home, I learned how to do paint by numbers. One of my unfinished works is actually behind me right now taunting me, telling me, pintahan mo na ako. Ganun. So I, I love doing paint by numbers. And also, um, my husband and I, we don't have kids yet, but we have three cats. So we actually, all of them are rescues. So I love taking care of animals. So kinukulit ko po sila every day. And I take a lot of pictures for them. And they actually have a very popular social media page called Condi Cats. Masikat pa po sila sa akin. So kung gusto niyo pong makakita ng tatlong matabang pusa, araw-araw, araw-araw po silang nagpo-post. Grabe. Um, yun po, Condi Cats on Facebook and on Instagram. <laughs> Thank you, Ma'am Helen. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Anna. Dr. Net, please. Yeah, ako excited ako dito kasi po-promote ko to. Uh, siguro some of you are already into this pero ito during the pandemic no uh, ngayon na hindi much restricted lumabas uh, i do wordle if you've heard of it wordle uh, saltong i i hope you do it that's a the tagalog version uh, saltong has because i realized mahirap pala ang ang tagalog no walang pattern unlike english so for me it's very challenging i always look forward to it supposedly pampatulog ko pero pag hindi ko ma-solve hindi ko alam kung ang tawag ba doon distresses but i enjoy it so uh for me distressing siguro yung ako ang may control no wala yung tinatanong ka anong gagawin this and that so so saltong and so my variations on wordle no cordel is is more challenging because there are four words then there's dordel these are all the the puzzles i i play and then so like dr chona i try to exercise also we have a small garden and uh i try to walk as much as i can that's also when i pray that's also when i plan no you kung may may iniisip ako uh, magmuni muni ano pa ba uh, Netflix when when I have the time pero I'm not into yung mga series talaga na uh, kung uh, pre pandemic I like swimming I I really like swimming so I like going to the beach I I also like traveling pero with the pandemic parang tinatamad na rin ako kahit bumalik parang nakakatamad mag <laughs> mag empake and all and you know i just enjoy lying down it's ah uh, another distressor which i think is not so healthy is going through social media it, it's so unhealthy i think pero yon i i subscribe to some newspaper so i read the the articles hindi ko alam kung distressor yon pero anything that doesn't require my full at yung that doesn't require me to decide siguro that's that's a distressor for me yan ah uh, i'm very close with my uh, siblings uh, so i talk to them that, 
that's for me that for me is very good also my mother uh, she's 93 so although she's still ano naman up and about so yan ang aking mga distresser ayun po uh, nako uh, deconstructing our women scientists no they are not paragons of intellects no baka baka po kasi yung ibang konsepto yung mga stereotype ng ating mga students no yung humanity at the core of women scientists no they, they do what brings them joy yun po yun eh yun yung lesson natin kila uh, uh, Dr. Net at kay Dr. Chona ayan po baka po meron pa tayong last question coming from our audience this is your chance po this is a rare opportunity uh Uh, according to Dr. Ritka, this is the first time that she uh, she used to have more uh, lectures po on plastics, uh, engineering, uh, environmental planning is probably uh, po. <laughs> Kulang nagtanong po ko sa plastics. Actually, ma'am, meron <laughs> pong isa. <laughs> Actually, po, meron pong isa na nagtatanong. Pero ito po ay tungkol sa ano. Tungkol, ma'am, sa what do we do with the face mask, ma'am? Ah, there should be a separate uh, collection for our face masks and it should be handled separately by it should be collected by local LGUs but unfortunately it's not being done by a lot of LGUs it's just being mixed with our ordinary uh, solid waste yon One is raising uh, his or her hand. So, pero pong isang question para po sa inyo. Siguro, this is our last question for uh, this really insightful ano po, ano, panel with you, uh, Dr. Niet and Dr. Chode. Uh, well, ito po, I think, coming from a research teacher you know, sa STEM. Uh, research is the heart of the STEM program in basic education. How can we encourage more students to seri- seriously focus on the subject in order for our future scienti- scientists to produce world-class researches in different science fields. If I may? Yes, sig- ma'am. Go ahead po. Um, siguro para sa akin, susi talaga is the passion. Uh, dapat makita nila, this is what I always emphasize to my students no? when they're doing their thesis or other research uh, projects. Dapat naiintindihan nila para saan yung research, ano yung use. Minsan kasi maliit lang na part ang gagawin natin. Pero dapat ma-situate nila in the bigger context na yun ay may may gamit, no? It's not just so we can be published. No, it's not just so you can have that degree. Pero kasi And sana may personal stake sila or may personal interest sila doon sa sa gagawin nilang research. Hindi yung kasi I always tell them, hindi kayo laborers na sasabihin ko lang step one, step two, step three. It should be something na na interested talaga tayo kasi yun din pala to the question kanina how what made you Uh, what kept you going no if something interests you kahit anong hirap talagang gagawin mo kasi una curious ka no yun pa pala keep them curious ano ano bang resulta no pag aralin ko to so kahit gaano kahirap uh, gagawin natin so yun siguro always always show the bigger context para saan itong ginagawa ko bakit ba ako magpapakahirap magsalok ng tubig sa napaka-polluted na river? No, bakit gusto kong malama? Gusto bakit gusto kong bilangin ilang microplastics ang andiyan sa isang maliit na creek? So, kung hindi niya nakikita na yung creek ay mapupunta sa Pasig River, yung Pasig River mapupunta sa Manila Bay, sa Manila Bay marami kang isda, yung isda kakainin ng ibon or no, napunta sa food chain. Siguro kung walang ganong appreciation, mahirap talaga. So, yan ang masasabi ko. Um, ipakita, we should show the, the bigger, the more important context which the student hopefully should be passionate about also. Thank you po, uh, Dr. Net. Uh, Dr. Chana? Mm, to add to what Dr. Net said, because everything she said is right and amazing and true, Just to add to it, I think we also have to remind ourselves and our students that 
science is not perfect. Um, the discoveries that science has made in the past don't necessarily stand anymore. And so being a scientist doesn't mean you're always right. Being a scientist means you are in search of truth. You are in search of knowledge. But because of <clears throat> our limitations as humans, the limitations of our technologies, we don't always get the right answers. And so we should be kind to ourselves and to each other when it comes to talking about what is right and what is wrong, because we never fully know what it is at any time in the world, no? Um, and so, I guess, just to connect it dun sa huling question ni Ma'am Helen, it's also important for our students to see that we are real persons, na hindi lang tayo yung research natin, na hindi 24-7, molecular biology, molecular biology, yan lang ang ginagawa natin. Kasi, nakaka-intimidate yun. And would we really want that kind of future for our kids, diba? For, for these young women? We want to show them that we're real people, we struggle, we find ways to have fun. And you can be here too. No, You don't have to look a certain way, you don't have to act a certain way. The thing that we share in common is our curiosity and our passion to understand the world. And as long as you have that, Come, let's join us. <laughs> you know, you can always have a, there's always a place for you in the field of STEM. Info. Thank you. Wow. Uh, just wow. Uh, Dr. Net and Dr. Chona, no? curiosity, context, connection, commitment, and of course, that uh, feeling of, you know, just being kind to yourself. Uh, it doesn't have to, you, you don't have to be right all the time. Let's, let's be realistic about our expectations also. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ned and Dr. Shana. It's a proud moment for me to moderate this panel. Um, I really enjoyed uh, the conversation and I hope um, the questions also uh, uh, that you were able to, um, and for, for which you were able to, uh, to richly answer you know, your, and share your insights. Uh, I think our audience are greatly appreciating you know, uh, this time uh, with you, uh, listening to your um, stories your experiences and the powerful messages that you are really uh, telling them so thank you very much po for this opportunity dr net and dr Sean. and looking forward to more opportunities uh, to collaborate with you for our certificate of appreciation dr helen thank you po ma'am sure we will now award the certificates of appreciation to our panelists this certificate of appreciation is awarded to for unselfishly sharing her valuable time, expertise, and meaningful insights as panelists during the Science Diplomacy Workshop Women in STEAM Careers webinar launch with the theme, Celebrating Women and Girls in Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts and Culture, and Mathematics, held via Zoom on February 28, 2022. Signed, Sherilyn C. Monterola, Director, UPNISMED, Dinartes M. Deloria, National Project Coordinator, Women in STEM Workforce, Readiness and Development Program, ILO, Madeline Mitchell de Yolanda, Press and Cultural Officer, Austrian Embassy, Manila. This certificate is awarded to Dr. Maria Antonia N. Tanchuling. Same certificate is awarded to Dr. Chona Camille Vinci Cruz Abeledo. Let us give our panelists a virtual applause. To the members of our panel, thank you very much for gracing this event, for underlying that science is all about asking questions and looking for answers. What you have just shared with us might just be what a number of women and girls needed to hear to consider careers in STEAM. And to our audience, thank you very much for being with us this afternoon. All good things must come to an end, but for this webinar series, not just yet. We would love to have all of you with us again on March 8, 2022 for the second webinar of this series. This webinar has the theme, The Art of Science and Math Teaching. We will be yes, posting sir. the details on how you can join the said event. Once again, thank you and good afternoon to all.
stay safe and well. But I have a note here. It says here that to receive your e-certificate of attendance, please answer the evaluation form through the following link. Okay, so this will be posted. Um, kindly check the chat box. Uh, you can click on the link for the evaluation form. Okay. Ulitin ko po ang sinabi ni Ambassador Dita Rasulian. Mabuhay ang mga kababaihan ng sensya.